Hello, and welcome to episode 8, Ocho, of the Holocron cast. I am your host, your local Jedi Holocron, <laughs> Tyler, alongside the Sith Holocron, Dan. How you doing today, Dan? I am the last Dan. The last Dan. The last Dan. You I like how you almost Dan. always, almost always, almost say the Jedi. Yeah. Um, one day I'll get the opening down. The Snyder Jai. Um, release the Snyder Cut, baby. Let's do it. <laughs> Did you see that this weekend? No. Everybody was tweeting about release the Snyder Cut. Of what? Justice League. Wow. Oh, I... Even like Ben Affleck, the guy who played Batman, Wonder Woman, the actors, the Snyder himself. This is getting some traction when the actors will want the Snyder Cut release. Makes me interested, you know. I don't even know. I don't even know who that is. You don't know who Wonder Woman is? No, Snyder, the director. Oh, well, I, yes. If it's his cut, I assume it's the director. Well, I don't know what you want me to say. Today's ep- episode, we will be talking about Rouge One. <laughs> no, Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Dan, Rogue One. It's a movie. It is indeed a film. A film. A cinema. It's a piece of cinema. It's a whole cinema. It's a it's a whole rigmarole. A whole rigmarole. So Dan. Yes. Let's talk about Rogue One. This is our what is this, our fifth movie now we're on? Out of yes. ten. Five out of well, ten counting uh Rise. No. Or no, yeah, it's eleven counting Wait, is Rise. This four? Yeah. No, this is five. Yeah. Because it was three and then Solo and now Rogue One. And then we have three and then seven and eight. So we have a lot to do. We do. So yeah, let's get right into it today. We're only one one month before the movie comes out. Only one month. Yeah, we're running. (laughs) We're running a little short. Yeah. So. Yes. When did you see Rogue One for the first time? I saw it uh, day one in theaters. That's a lot. You saw it day zero. Okay, okay. That's the Thursday night. Day one's the release date. Day zero. Thursday night, baby. Night zero. Day zero. It's my favorite day to see Star Wars, you know. Just like how that's when we're seeing Rise. That's when we're seeing everyone for for the rest of time. But, yeah. Another one we saw at the same time. Dan, do you remember when we got Rogue One tickets? I do. (laughs) When we were getting Rogue One tickets... We went to the theater to pick them up for some dumb reason, which I wasn't used to buying. It was back in the day. I was confused. I didn't, we didn't need to pick them up till day. But we like, oh, let's go grab them. Why not? Why, why not? Why not just have them on us? So we, just in case the sand where you print them was busy the day of them, it came out. We were so young. So young and so reckless and so, so confused. Stupid. But somebody, there was a cardboard cutout <laughs> of a stormtrooper. And some dudes just stole it. They just took it and <laughs> left the mall. Yeah, it, it, our theater is in a mall, so they took the stormtrooper thing and just booked it out of there, threw it in the back of a truck, and then we were walking like shit. They're probably gonna think it was us who did it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we would have done it. Nah, ceilings are crime. But it's a cardboard cutout. That's true. Then we could have a, a stormtrooper on the podcast with us. Dan, if you want me to buy a cardboard <laughs> cutout. I'm more than happy to buy a Ray or a Kylo cardboard cutout. <laughs> you buy uh, a Ray one, and I'll buy a uh, Porkins one. And then Thor will just be in the middle. Yeah, Thor will just be there. You have a corporate cutout of Thor for for a bit for a, for for many reasons. <laughs> None of them. Yeah, never mind. It but always scares me. It always, yeah, you you'll get used to it one day. One. It's far enough in the room now where I don't really see it that often. It just blends yeah, in. Yeah, I don't see it that often, but when I do see it, it always scares it's me. It's frightening. It's terrifying. Because it's like, whenever it gets dark out and you go into that room, it's like a, it's like a shed almost. It's just a storage room. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I always just walk in there. It's just like a giant man standing there. Yeah, it's the it's thing where we at least place where you least expect to see it, but also where the hell is going to put it without people asking questions. And I'm a scared little boy... I'm a scared little chunky boy, and I know this big muscular man is going to kill me. Yeah, sometimes I fear that I'll just wake up and he'll be standing in the doorway. <laughs> and I'll just be like, what the fuck? Someone going should on? do that. That'd be funny. I've thought about my, one time my mom, when I we, my brother came home, because that's in my brother's room, when he was home for a break, she put Thor on my bed. <laughs> and when I got home from work in the morning, he was just there. 
And it wasn't scary. It was more just like, I just work 12 hours. I don't need to deal with this right now. <laughs> but like, yeah. Did you sleep with them? Not that night. Oh, okay. Future okay. nights. <laughs> it, when you have more energy. Yeah, I only sleep with them when I have energy. That's fair. He he's deserves cute, the best. He's, 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 a, he's a cute little boy. He deserves the best. <laughs> I think it was more of a cute little boy when he had long hair. Yes. And the braid in his beard. That's top Thor, in my opinion. Fat Thor? No, was just, when he, fat just Thor? when he has the braid in his beard. Fat Thor is Yeah, it was favorite. Fat Thor, but he, he didn't look as fat when he had like the armor on. True. <laughs> he Whenever fat. he's fat, that's when I identify with him. Because right. he, he was about the size of me. No, he was still thinner than you. No, it was kind of close. The stomach, but up top. Well, because he's because he's jacked, they, yes. didn't, they didn't actually give him fat exactly. for the film. Exactly, I'm saying he had the same stomach as he had me. That beer gut. He had the same beer gut as me, even though I don't drink beer. I don't blame you. Beer's disgusting. I've never had a sip of alcohol. Okay, Dan, you trying to get our audience to run away now? <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to get our audience. We're weird, away. but not that weird. We're trying to get our audience away with a six minute discussion about Thor. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I'm, I like going off topic sometimes. Absolutely, this is a this is a Star Wars podcast. Do you know what I love talking about more than anything in Star Wars? Thor. Thor. He's my Wouldn't Chris Hemsworth be great in Star Wars though? Is that the guy who plays Thor? Yeah. Oh, okay. Have you seen the video where they recut the scene from Ragnarok with him fighting the Hulk, put lightsabers in their hands? No, but that sounds great. That's pretty cool. It's almost as cool as the one where they put lightsabers on Arya's fight in the Battle of Winterfell <laughs> when she's fighting the Whites. But... Is that just a whole genre, just putting lightsabers in every fight? Yes. I have to look into this now. See, Arya would be a great Sith Lord. Chris Hemsworth would be a great... Not a Sith Lord, a great Jedi. Dual-wield Jedi. I could see... I, I think it would be funny to see, like, a small Sith Lord. <laughs> That'd be cool, yeah. Every Sith Lord we see is, like, either giant or, like, an old man. Mm-hmm. That's true. Enough about people who could be. <laughs> Let's talk, we're we're going we're to talk about a movie where there's no lightsabers wielders, except a little. Except for one. There's no new ones. And it's not really relevant to the plot. But it kind of is, but it's really not. But it's a great scene. Yes. Some say it's a, the best scene <laughs> in cinema. You know why? Because he doesn't talk and he doesn't sound like 80-year-old. What's his name? James Earl James Jones. James Earl Jones. I said, See, if they're already in Star Wars, I know their name. I almost said Edward James Olmos. I don't know who that is, but that's Me neither. <laughs> He's not in Star Wars, so I don't know him. Hey, Dan. So, yeah, we both saw the film together Thursday night. I take out my movie ticket book, but I didn't get time for that. It's not like they can see it anyway. Yes. The date was December something. December. <laughs> I remember seeing this movie, though, a second time on Christmas with my brother. Christmas Day? Yes. And I slept during most of it. Mainly because <laughs> I was just exhausted. But I remember falling asleep during most of it. Did you work the previous day or something? No, I was still working in my normal job where I didn't work overnight, so I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't... I don't think I worked the night before. I'm just a tired boy, you know. I saw Rogue One in theaters, I think, three times? I thought you were about to say 13. No, that was Force Awakens. <laughs> That'll be an interesting story when we get to that. But uh, I think I saw Rogue One in theaters three times. I know. Once with you guys. and then Once without me. Once without you. I remember you. that one because all my friends went, but I had a Christmas with my family. I missed it. And from that moment on, everybody hated me. No. Yeah, of course. That's and then I, me and my dad went and saw it. Yeah. Probably, I think on my birthday. I don't think my parents have seen any of the new Star Wars. Me and my dad usually go and see all the new ones. Except mm-hmm. for Solo, we didn't go and see because my dad didn't want to see it again. Again. Well, because he went and saw it once. With your mom? Yeah. I can't get my dad to see a movie to save my life. (laughs) He falls asleep. I'm sure me and my dad are going to go and see Rise of Skywalker on my birthday. Yeah, 15 times. Yeah. We're going to see that movie so many times, Daniel. Oh, I'm aware. Every time we hang out and record a podcast, we're seeing Rise of Skywalker afterwards. (laughs) Cool down, you know? Cool but, down. But, but Raylo gives me life, so I need to re-energize you after need, that. You need, a, you need, need an the, injection. Need injection of Raylo. Gives me life, you know? Ugh. So, yeah. That was our first experiences with the movie. And, of course, we both loved it at the time, I think. Right? Yes. Yes. So, I still love it. Me too. But, so, Dan, thoughts on the movie? We are three years removed now, and you've watched it for the fourth time, I assume? Fifth time? Uh, probably fifth. This is probably my fifth time as well. Fourth or fifth. What do you think, Dan, of Rogue One as a movie? 
I think Rogue One as a movie is like a, like a how do I describe it? It well, has kind of the same problem as Solo. Like a cube. Sometimes, I don't know, I was going to try to make up an analogy on the spot, but it didn't work. I kind of compare it to like Solo, where it kind of has a little bit of a rough like first half. Mm-hmm. But in my opinion, as soon as they get to Scarif, that's like the best Star Wars gets. Yeah, the last hour is pretty much on Scarif. Yeah. Like, as soon as they land on Scarif, in my opinion, that is where it is. Peak. The Peak entertainment. Some of the peak of Star Wars altogether. Yeah. I just love everything about Scarif. But everything before that, like, especially the very beginning where they're jumping from planet to planet really quickly... It's a little jarring, especially the first time we saw it. I remember actually being kind of confused because they just kept going from place to place to place. Yeah, I remember the first time seeing it. I'm like, wait, I don't, I don't love this yet. <laughs> it was the first time seeing a Star Wars movie where I wasn't like in it right away. You know what I mean? It yeah. took a while to get in this one. Yeah, it definitely has a weird first act, and it's there's so much ground to cover. Yeah, right you, off the bat, you're introducing five new characters and. No, pretty much we don't know many of these people at all, and we gotta get you gotta give us enough to like care, but also yeah. not give us too much to make the movie move forward and in, 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 in a good pace in an interesting way. Yeah, so that that's my thought. It, it it's kind of like Solo, where it just gets significantly better near the end. I think Solo picked up a little quicker though. Solo picked up quicker, but it didn't ever get as high. Oh, not nearly as high. But yeah, I love this movie. Going into this, this is like the top three Star Wars movie for me. Still top three, but I was just, I didn't enjoy it as much this time around. I enjoyed the parts I enjoyed. Maybe it's just because I'm really tired right now for some reason. <laughs> I'm in a, I don't know, I'm in a weird state right now. And yeah, but like, not as good as I remember it. It's a little slow. I love it. The one that, K2SO steals the show constantly. Cassian is like the Kira of the last movie. I just want to know more about you and future stuff. Not future stuff, but in past stuff. I need to know more about him as a character. In prequels. And yeah. This is a good movie. Yeah. I enjoy it. I, I liked all I liked a lot of the a lot of the action was very nice. 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 <laughs> oh, I like the action. It was, had uh, some it was... quality stuff like when Jin took out the baton and like hit stormtroopers yeah, I like in the, the head. I like the Tanfa. That's what it's called, the Tanfa. That's the name of that weapon. Mm. That's an actual weapon that exists, you know. Well, yeah, I just thought it was a baton. No, well, the tech, like a... That's what they call it when the police use it. I thought she stole it from an off-duty police officer. She stole it from the Rebels, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, she stole all her weapons from the Rebels. Even her pistol, which her pistol in uh, the 2015 Battlefront was interesting. Because it was... You could just switch its mode constantly. Oh, yeah. It was like a pistol, a sniper, an assault rifle, and then like a grenade launcher or something. Really weird. <laughs> it's, it's Jack of all trades, the Swiss Army knife of guns. It is. But yeah, Dan, I mean, what else? You, what, do you, what do you love about What do you hate about this movie? What do I hate about this movie? Um, Not hate, but don't love. Don't love. Hate's a strong word. Hate's a strong word. Um... Mostly a lot of just, like, the beginning stuff, like I said. Yeah. There, there's not too much that I dislike. I think it's just a lot of parts that are too slow for my liking. I don't think there's any, like, things that happen that I think are, like, bad. Yeah. I'm you not know a, what I mean? Yeah. The one thing, like, there's a few scenes that stick out for me that I'm like, you don't need to be here, which is Boar Gullet and, um, the first Vader scene where he's just talking to Krennic. Mm-hmm. I feel that scene just does nothing for this movie. It's cool to see Vader, obviously, but also, like I said, James Earl Jones sounds like he's 100 years old, which he is. Which, I'm sure at this point you could just do computer animated Vader voice and make it sound the same. And like the guy, young. Uh, um, whoever they do with um, Battlefront. Yeah. Because it's not James Earl Jones, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, he sounds fine. Yeah. Was he, it Was it James Earl Jones in Rebels? Yeah, I think so. But I remember Filoni said he didn't want to do it without James. And that's a fair standpoint. Yeah. But it, also, he's not going to be around forever, so if you want to keep using him, I'd figure out a good way to implement, like... Yeah. Well, it's definitely easier with someone like Vader. Yeah, because the mask. You just got to get the The tone. distortion. You mm-hmm. got to get the right, um... The right, like, depth. Yeah. Yeah, uh... The Borgullet scene is 
is a weird one. It's definitely a weird one. It's like they had to squeeze a monster in. Right? You gotta get the um, obligatory Star Wars monster. Yeah. This one wasn't even that cool either. It was an octopus. <laughs> I like the concept of it, though. Yeah, the idea that he... What does he do? He, like, sees your... Uh, like a, He's like a living lie detector. He makes you go insane, pretty much, though, too. Well, yeah, because it's basically sticking its tentacles into your brain. Most people usually don't recover from that, though, right? That's what they imply. We've never really seen the Borgullet before. Yeah, but Bodhi recovers. You want to know why? The Force? Because Bodhi's a Jedi. Well, also, he was telling the truth, which I sh- I'm sure is... Helpful? Yeah, because Saw said, if you tell the truth, there's no danger. Well, there's some danger. Like, you still could pop, go insane, but it's not as dangerous as if you lied. Well, I hope not. Then you're just using that to make people go insane. <laughs> well, I think that's the point of that scene, honestly, is just to show how extreme Saw is. Yeah. I agree. It's not a very... It's not a necessary scene, because we already get that he's extreme. Damn. You know, Saw. They need to make sure we know Saw is extreme. He's, he's an... edgy. He's, <laughs> he's trying new things. He's edgy. He's the... Is he the rebel edgelord? He is the dreamer of dreamers. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Me neither. What about his boy Two Tubes? Ben Thick. Ben Thick. Ben Thick. He's thick. He is thick. With the tubes and the Ben. So what do you? What is there anything else that you don't care for within this piece of cinema? Cinema. <laughs> well, that one's for you, Scorsese. Um, <laughs> no, not really. Those are the two scenes that like kind of bother me. That stick out. Yeah. And neither of them are, like, egregiously bad. No, none of them are like, oh, fuck you, but... Yeah, those are weird. My favorite... Do you want to know what my favorite scene in the movie is? Hmm. We'll get this out of the way early. I have some dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite scene in this movie is... I'm not going to read the whole thing. But one of my favorite scenes in this movie is when Jin and Cassian are talking on his U-Wing after Edu. On the Imperial shuttle, you mean? Yeah. Like, once they, once Galen's dead and everything's happening. uh, On the Zeta-class shuttle is the official title of it. But, like, I just love, like, they're arguing, but they're, like, in a way, they're both, like, really right. Like, they're both... Like, Jin's like... They both have a point. They both have a good point. Neither of them are wrong. Like, Jin's like, you're trying to kill my dad. And he's like... He's trying to, like, hide it, but, like... I love his... He is like a... Where is it at? This is the thing I love. He's like, what do you know? We don't all have the luxury of deciding when and where we want to care about something. Suddenly the rebellion is real for you. Some of us live it. I've been in this fight since I was six years old. You're not the only one who lost everything. Some some of us decided to do something about it. And then Jin's like, you can't talk your way around this. And then it's like, I just love that quote. Because it's so real. It's like, that's when you feel for casting for the first time. You're like, he's a shady guy. He's doing weird things. He's like killing people, killing rebels. And he's like, like this dude's up to something. But like, he is orders. Like, the re- this just makes me love, this, uh, this movie makes me love the rebellion more than I ever have. And I've always been a fan of them. But like, they're they're gray. They're not just goody two shoe people. They're complicated. They've they've lost things. They're they're like some of them are like saw, but not as extreme. And like he's like the middle between saw and mon mop. The one's a psychopath and one's a fucking idiot. And like they both want the same thing, but they both go about it in terrible ways. And he's in the middle, like following orders, doing what he needs to do, and sometimes not doing the right thing because it needs to be done. And I love that about him. And I just love that line so much when they're arguing because it's like just a great moment for me. See, to me, this is the first movie where they actually make me like the the non-main character rebels Mm -hmm. for the exact reason that you said. I don't like the non, you know, not the main Falcon crew. Everyone else with the rebels, I could give two shits less about. (laughs) Because they're in the original trilogy, they're just framed as they're just the good guys. Yeah. There's no real depth. There's not too much to them. Mm-hmm. So I just never really gave a shit about them. But now, you know, with Saw is the perfect catalyst to show that there are shades of gray in the Rebellion. And that's this is the first time that I actually I think Cassian's, like them. Yeah, Cassian's, I think, a better... 
Cassian's a better example, but example. Saw's a good like uh, juxtaposition. Yeah, especially to fucking Law and Mob. Yeah, because they're the polar opposites. I also really love the um. I love any time they're like with with the rebels, like the scene where they're all at the table deciding what to do. I feel like this movie has a lot of great quotes in it about the rebellion and like stuff like that. Like rebellions are built on hope. I love that line. I use it way more often in real life than I should. <laughs> Constantly. Constantly. I'm a big fan of the line when the there's like one lady who's like, if they have a weapon like this, we have to scatter our fleets. You know, we have no choice but a fight. Or we have no choice, we can't fight them. And then one guy's like, well, if that's our point of view, then why even have a fleet to begin with? Yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> you know, shit, you're kind of right. <laughs> why have a fleet if you're just going to disband it at the first moment of trouble? Mm-hmm. I also and were... you got the G Admiral Radis. Yes. I thought, you know what I thought you were going to say? Hmm. Your favorite line is from that scene where the guy in the back's like, "What is she suggesting?" <laughs> That's a great line. What is she proposing? <laughs> it was just that he's just that random guy screaming in the background, oh. and then you got Chopper there too. Yes, Chopper's there. I just love like Jin has some good quotes, you know, and then of course Saw has my favorite quote of all time. But we'll get to that at a different time in this podcast because <laughs> we'll probably talk about Saw for a while. But yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's definitely a lot to talk about with him. I almost did it, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get out the little hint out there. Mm-hmm. What could the what could he possibly be saying? That, that line that he says gives me chills when I watch the trailer again, just for fun. When you go back and watch the Rogue One trailer, every time <laughs> chills when he says that. I've never watched a trailer for a movie after it's come out. Are you kidding me? I love watching rewatching trailers, dude. <laughs> okay. See, the line that he's talking about is Bogalit! Bogalit! No. My, my, my second favorite is Saw line. Lies! Deception! We used to say that all the time. We did. Like, I need to bring that back. Any Anytime anything would happen. Now when we hang out with our friends, you're going to be like, so you just watched Rogue One, right? Lies! Deception! <laughs> and with one of our friends, we have a lot of reason to say that, you know? <laughs> That was a good one, wasn't it? That was, that, was a, that was a spicy I one. I made a funny. That was a spicy one. Yeah. But yeah. Any other preamble to get to before we get to the segments? Yeah, um, have you seen the, um, the, new, the, the new Dairy Queen funny? <laughs> I, knew, I knew it was going to be something completely unrelated. Yeah, I don't even I know. I saw the shit-eating grin on your face. You're like, hey, have you tried the new Dairy Queen flavor? <laughs> what? Come on, what is it? I don't know. I, have to, I, I don't know. I don't go to Dairy Queen that often. I was gonna th- bullshit one on the spot, like gummy worms with pudding or some dumb shit. Pudding pops. Pudding pops. It's the Bill Cosby special. <laughs> <laughs> I got some pudding. No. What do you think of the nickname Pudding? I'm not a fan of it. You don't like the name Pudding? No. And it's kind of a creepy. Thing to call someone. Well, like, yeah. I feel like that's what, like... That's what the Joker... No, that's what Harley calls the Joker. But I feel like pudding. that's what, or, like... Or, the other way around. Harley and Joker use it. Puddin'. I feel like puddin' is, like, what, like, a sexual predator would say to someone. Yeah. I feel like no one in their right mind says it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like I said, where's Har- our- Harley and Joker. Not exactly. Right mind. Exactly. Where's, where's our Star Wars character who calls someone puddin'? Which Star Wars character do you think would most likely be would call someone Puddin? Obi Wan. No, he wouldn't call. Just someone as a Puddin. joke, like he would he, say, he, it he sa- say it like, sarcastically. He would say it if he hears someone else say it. That's fair. Like if so, like say if like he was with another Jedi or especially Anakin. If someone calls Anakin Puddin, Obi Wan would just walk up behind him and be like, Puddin. <laughs> He just wouldn't drop it. They all did call people m'lady, so... M'lady? M'lady? They missed their fedoras, though. Yeah. Hey, Dan. Get that clap on. So. So. You want to know about the controversy of this film? (laughs) I was waiting for this segment. This film, not as bad as Solo, but... That's hard to beat. Yeah. This movie... Had a lot of reshoots. 
And we know this because they had to hire a director to come in who's never worked on a Star Wars before, just says no, it was nothing about Star Wars, or would never want to work on a Star Wars to fix the movie as a just as a movie. Just to make it a good movie. Yeah, because like the movie apparently had a lot of problems. This is another one where I love to see the original cut of this movie. I bet it's bad. <laughs> Yeah. Because you know the first half's pretty slow, but once we get to the third act, it's perfect. But, like, I, I... Do you think the original cut, or, it, like, the whole movie is like the first act? No, not... I just don't think it's... I wonder what they added, because I know what... If what, you look at the trailer... <laughs> yeah, there's... there's. I know the two scenes that stand out from the trailer that definitely weren't in the movie that were, um... I'm a rebel. I rebel, or whatever. And then... You very clearly see them running with the Death Star plans on the ground of Scarif. Yeah, because weren't uh, Jin and Cassian were supposed to make it out, right? Um, originally, yes. No, I remember the writer, the director's like asked if we could kill them all, and Kathleen Kennedy's like, yeah. They didn't think they were going to be able to kill them all. Mm, so they had prepared a, a version where, where Jin and Cassian survived. Yes. But I'm glad that didn't happen. Absolutely. Because I love their moment at the end, too. Yeah, they have a good moment. And with characters like that who are important, you could always run into the problem of, well, where, where are they been? Yeah, where are they? <laughs> you could, especially especially Jin in particular, who is so connected to Galen, and Galen's like, you have to destroy the Death Star for her to not be there if she survived. Yeah. Would be really weird. Mm -hmm. Cassian makes a little bit more sense because he's more of like a spy. Mm -hmm. And Luke and them didn't really interact with spies. At least not on screen. <laughs> Only in the comics. Only in the comics. <laughs> but yeah. I like though that they didn't show... I like the trailer where they show us the tone of the movie, but they don't show us the actual scenes of the movie. A lot of people are mad about that, but I personally love that. I don't want to see the movie. Yeah. Give me a taste of what it's going to be like, but without giving me it. You know what I mean? Because most trailers show way too much. Show way too much. Like, I remember, um, like a week after Endgame came out, the TV spots were Show showing it. literally the fight at the end. What? They literally showed the, um, assemble moments where he says it. And I'm like, this movie came out like a week and a half ago and this is your TV That's spot. That's like the worst thing to show in a fucking trailer. See, I, see, I'm like, it was a TV spot though. It wasn't like, on the internet or whatever. Mm. It probably was. Well, like, it got uploaded to the internet. But, like, why? Yeah, why? I'm in the same boat as you. I hate, I absolutely hate when movies show way too much in the trailer. Pro big problem with comedies. <laughs> yeah. Good thing Star Wars is not a comedy. Right. All Just all the good jokes are in the trailer. Right. Yeah. I, I, I very much like that about this movie as well. It does a very good job of setting the tone. If Jin and Cassian survive, where are they afterwards? Ray's parents. I thought that going into this movie. That was a big theory going into this movie. They're like, why is this movie coming out? Are they Ray's parents? Right, that'd be cool. That's the theory. The that timeline does not fit at all, though. Anything that comes out, everything, anything that came out after Force Awakens. There's all. There's always a theory somewhere of this is where we're gonna find Ray's parents. Mandalorian's Ray's dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like every, every every single time, I see it every single time. Did I mention last week on the solo podcast that Kira and Han are Ray's parents? I think you said. I'm it, sure I mentioned it at some. Point. You said it was a quip, I think, in like the middle of it, and then our theory episode, you went in length about it. Mm, yeah. That's episode two of the podcast, by the way, if you want to check that out. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. Plug, to, plug, plug, plug. That's my favorite thing to do. Is Try to tie in... Everything I, to Ray. Of course, because... I don't know if you guys know this, but... Ray, top five character, cinema. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cracked myself up. Don't use the word cinema. No, that's not even true. <laughs> I, I was going to say Star Wars, but I thought it'd be more like... More, even more of a hot take. More of a hot take, but I said cinema. I just, I just don't like the term cinema. I know. See, I'm so uh, my Star Wars bias is so high. If I had to pick the best characters in cinema, they would probably be almost all Star Wars. Right. I think about it sometimes. Who like my favorite characters in fiction? Then I'm like, I feel like half of them would be Star Wars characters. I feel like seventy five percent of mine would be Star Wars. 
Just because there's nothing else that I really care as much about. And then Ray would be on it, right? No. <laughs> just Rose? Well, it depends on... No. It depends on how big of a list. 27. <laughs> I think she's at 27 I, on yeah, your I list. I think she's <laughs> 27th on my list. But yeah. We'll have a video about that at one point. No, oh, yeah. After Rise. Top 50 Star Wars characters? Yep. Oh god, that'll be a pain in the ass to make. <laughs> It'll be a pain in the ass for me, because I'm the one that has to edit pictures of every character we talk about. <laughs> I can do it. No. Just give me some software. Nope, I'm the editor. Oh, so I can't edit. I see how I do No! It. You're the host, I'm the editor. Mr. Twitter? <laughs> They're making a Joker sequel. <laughs> Tell you, this is gonna be our most quality Star Wars podcast of all time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what makes you say that? Because we've barely talked about Star Wars so far, and I think we're doing pretty good. <laughs> That's fair. It all ties back to Star Wars, though. Mm-hmm. So, did you know that um, if you mow the lawn backwards in a circle and do the square root of it? You get the Millennium Falcon. I was going to say the Death Star. I don't know where I was going with that. I was going to say the Death Star plans. Right. <laughs> Tie it into Rogue One, man. Yeah, Come on! The Death Star plans. I see the Death Star plans. End of podcast. Thank you. Good night. Yep. Click. <laughs> the Chosen One is C-3PO. <laughs> the Chosen One is C-3PO. No, pow. No, Bastan. No, Borgullet. Borgullet! Death Trooper number four. I personally like number seven better. That's the one with the sniper rifle. Okay, that was the show, guys. <laughs> but yeah, this movie had <laughs> interesting controversies around it. Like, this one's actually more like of a mixed fan reaction, too. I feel like you people either loved it because it's like unabashedly original trilogy Star Wars with an awesome epic battle at the end, and a lot of people hate it because there's like way too many forced cameos and nothing like super original and just... You know what I mean? Yeah. It's definitely one of the more divisive ones. I won't call it divisive. It's just like... Well, it... Cause like, Last Jedi is divisive. Last Jedi is the most divisive. I would say this is the second. I don't think people hate this movie like they hate The Last Jedi, but people it, just like... Nothing's near don't that Don't enjoy level. it. I've seen a lot of people who really hate this film. <laughs> because there's a lot of like really bad like forced cameos. Like the two dudes from the bar in episode four. Like, come on. See, I like that stuff, though. But like... Why? Not why do you like it, but like why them? Why that moment? Like, you know what I mean? Like C three P and R two makes sense. C three P and R two. See, that's the one that most people hate. No, that's the one that I feel like I like the least because that one just. I think it's more of just like how it just immediately just pans over to them and they have their little line. Yeah. Like I like the ghost stuff and the rebel stuff because that's stuff that. They need to tie in more. Yeah, that's stuff that well, hasn't like, been... The, 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 the ball chin guy and the fucking fucked up nose dude, like, why? You know, he's a big part of a comic. Who, the ball chin guy? No, the, the fucked up nose guy. No idea. He's a big part of a comic series. I'm not... I, I'm pretty sure it's canon. Poe Dameron one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Where he rebuilds his arm. Who, Poe, or...? No. Nose the big guy. nose guy, he rebuilds his arm. Oh, he gets cut arm. off, right? In yeah. The floor. And for some reason, there's blood. For, I, for some reason, he cut him with a lightsaber, and there's blood. That's why I don't like when people complain about the rules of Star Wars, because I don't think they've ever been really consistent. <laughs> you know what I mean? Especially not then. Like, the Force is mysterious, and the rules how things work are mysterious. It's, I think it's the, I think the fan explanation that most people say <laughs> that's, like, really ham-fisted is, like, oh, Obi-Wan just hasn't used his lightsaber in a long time, so it wasn't hot enough to cauterize. That is literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it's pretty stupid. And that doesn't even work anymore. Chewie getting killed by a moon makes more sense than that. Oh, God. Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> But what is your favorite controversy about this movie, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> um, see, I don't know of that many controversies about this one. I just know there's a lot of people that don't really like it, and then a lot of people that love and it. It had a lot of reshoots. And I, yeah, like... And a lot of writers. A lot of writers. A lot of rewrites. A lot of rewrites. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it turned out quite well with all... <laughs> quite the well. Quite well with all the problems. Yeah. 
Okay, let's get into it then. Let's last week jump we, into it. Last week we tested the segments. I think it went really well. I still think that's our best podcast we've recorded ever. Funny thing is, is that while we're recording this, the solo episode still hasn't gone up, so we don't have any feedback. Nah, who cares? I don't care what they say. That's my favorite podcast we've recorded. It's not like we get much it's feedback. It's not like we get feedback anyway. Plug. 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 Leave to someone. And if you give us feedback, at least give us a reason why. <laughs> Just don't say, I hate it. <laughs> Help me understand. I want to be free of this pain. I want to be free of this pain. Dude, I I feel like our... our Episode 7, episode 8 podcast are going to be like four hours long. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I feel like the eight... I could talk about the line, let's be free of this pain for 30 minutes. Just that line. <laughs> and how I relate to it. And how it's affected me as a person. And how Ben Solo is the chosen one. The prince that was promised, you know? I wonder... What's that from? The prince that was promised. That's Game of Thrones. Okay. I, I, I wonder which two films are going to be pretty much your highest. <laughs> Kylo Ren is a Zora High. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like the episode 8 podcast will be like five hours long. Oh, for sure. Just because there's so much to That's unpack. A, yeah. See, this one, there's not like a ton to unpack. That's true. I'm just, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty straightforward, man. One thing I do personally love about this movie is how they fixed the biggest flaw of episode 4 is like, how is this one little blowing up this one little tiny thing shooting and <laughs> destroy the Death Star? And they did it really well. Like, yeah. I know that. I don't know. So so underrated. I don't know how widespread this opinion is, but I know I have seen people saying that they actually really hate that. No, it's dumb. Why would that? It makes it so much better. It makes it make a lot more sense, especially because the Death Star Two in uh, Return of the Jedi doesn't have that flaw. It's just that it wasn't done yet. Yeah. So they could just fly sure. into the inside. Yeah. Like this helps your Luke argument, like. People, local lovers, that this helps you. Like, how did he know just to shoot that? How is he not just some god who just learned how to fly and blow up the Death Star in one shot? Oh, true. Like, yeah. this helps you Luke lovers out there. It you helps him I mean? not be as overpowered. Is that what you're yeah. saying, basically? It was like, I don't, I don't know if you know this, Dan. They, people think Grey's a Mary Sue. I think, Luke, oh, no. I think Luke and Anakin are just as Mary Sue's. Her. That's the Force for you. I hate when they use that argument in Star Wars. That's the Force. Yeah, the Force is definitely a Mary Sue maker. Like, when you just... That's, that's Star Wars for you. If you don't like Mary Sue's, don't like... like I don't even think it's that. It's just the Force between the Force and Star Wars. Young Jedi just learning the way super fast. That's just how it works. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely the same way. Like, Anakin is kind of the one that I see the least because he trained the longest. Yeah. Obviously Luke, Anakin the least. Luke had virtually no training... I don't think he had any training until any of the movies. Until six. Yeah. He trained in between five and six, and he trained a little bit in five. For like 20 minutes. Well, it was a few days. But still, Yoda was asleep half the time. (laughs) It was like we said in episode three, fuck Yoda. At least that's what I say. That's not how I feel. Even though he's great in episode five. Luke was there for a while. In episode five? Yeah. But still. Because the Falcon crew was on Bespin for a while. Yeah. People just need to understand context, you know? Like how people are, like, mad at the episode 9 trailer where they're like, c 3 was taking a look at my friends. So like, you've been with them for a week. There's a year between it. They've been friends. Well, plus also Chewie's there. Yeah. R2's there. I think R2 was there. Zori Bliss is there. Was R2 there? Oh, yeah, I think so. I know at least Chewie was there. And he's been with Chewie for the past 30 years. Dio. <laughs> like, I could, I could also especially see him talking about Poe there. Mm-hmm. Because I think he's involved early with Poe and them in the Rebellion, right? Well, because well, Poe, yeah, Poe's been part of the Rebellion. He's been Poe's been part of the Resistance with Leia. Yeah, he's been with them forever. And 3 P's always with Leia. People, man. <laughs> this... What were we talking about, Rogue One? Honestly, if we never <laughs> talk about Rogue One versus podcast, I'd be okay. <laughs> I love the movie, but still, I'm having fun right now. Oh, absolutely. I'm just, I, I just think it's hilarious. I'm not complaining. It's, it'll be real funny if we spent the first 30 minutes talking about Disney Channel original movies. Oh, God. So it'd be 30 minutes of you just talking and me not saying <laughs> yeah, anything? We, like, you don't have knowledge of it. But we need to find something that's really obscure that we both have knowledge of that's so random just talking about for like 30 minutes one podcast. It'd be funny. Just in the middle. So, you know that... No, we're not, we'll talk about this off air. Um, okay. But yeah... Rogue One. 
Okay, let's do it. Let's get into it. Let's talk about the movie. Piece by piece. Layer by layer. Onion by onion. Kyber crystal by kyber crystal. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> let's get into it. Um, let's get into it. Let's just jump into it. Yeah, this one's going to be divided into four sections. Yes. Pre-Jetta. Jetta. Jetta. <laughs> Post-Jetta. Which is pretty much just Edu, but I like calling it Post-Jetta because of the theme. <laughs> and then Scarif. Which we'll be talking about Scarif the most. Scarif. Obviously, but Scarif is literally like the last 50 minutes of this movie. Yes. So, so Dan. Scarif. Pre-Jetta. We meet young Jin or so. And Blue Milk. She is a doll. Blue Milk. Blue Milk. Okay, we're on to Jetta now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Lyra Urso. I like that name. I like. Lyra. I really like the line that Krennic has there where he's like, Oh look, it's Lyra, back from the dead. What a miracle. It is a miracle. <laughs> it really is. I can't believe she came back from the dead like that. Galen trying to pull one over on him. And I like how like Galen's like so defeated already. Well, what do you expect? He, I mean, yeah, a bunch fucked. of death troopers showed Four up. Death troopers are, once they found him, he's fucked. No, yeah. He's literally living on a farm. I agree. That's why I like it, though. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> he's just, like, such a broken man at this point. Like, he so looks all broken. disheveled, and he's just like, it's a simple life. My mind doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great liar. Oh, yeah. Great liar. Uh, Death Troopers are rad. I love Death Troopers. Yeah, that's the one thing about Solo in this one, and the prequel. And actually, I wouldn't say this about the 7 and 8, because they're just, like, no special troopers. Yeah, there aren't out. too many special ones. The only reason I like Executioner is because of Galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, trooper designs on point. Trooper designs are, are on point. And I do love that the Death Troopers in this movie, one thing I was worried about before they're this tall. movie... One thing I was worried about before this movie came out was, like, I was like, where the... Where did these guys come from? But they're specifically used to guard um, Krennic and other high members of... I think it's called the Tarkin Initiative. It's like a bunch of like high-ranking scientists and designers and stuff. Thrawn had Death Troopers with him. So it's a lot of like those higher-up officers have Death Troopers. Do you think the Doctor from The Mandalorian had one before the Empire fell? I don't know anything <laughs> about him from before the Empire fell. Also, if he I'd did, say yes. Also, if he did, wouldn't it still be with him? No, they died. But he got out? Yeah, he's a doctor. His brain's useful. <laughs> Someone saved him. And then the bunch of storm and then those four stormtroopers survived, of course. Yeah. That's fair. But yeah, designs on point here. They're tall. They're thick. They're tall. Boys. I love their just the pudding pops. Pudding. Then you have, you know, Galen has this whole escape plan all, like, laid out, and then everyone just fucks it up. Yeah, like, Lyra's supposed to run away. She just comes back with a gun for some reason. Jin's supposed to get in her hole, but she's just sitting in the weeds watching until until her mama gets shot. Then she starts running. <laughs> supposed to get in her hole? <laughs> what? <laughs> she's supposed to get in the hole in the ground, the rock. Yeah. In the bunker. In the bunker. And then Saw finds her. Lies. Deception. My child. Come here. I love his voice. Yeah. Like the raspiness. He's like a very broken man. I mean, yeah. We've, we've seen his backstory. His sister died. Lux was heartbroken. <laughs> Wait, is that why he's a dreamer? Who? Lux. Is he a dreamer? He's the mystery guy in Aiden's book. Didn't you know that? No. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Yeah. I'll forget by the time I read that. Yeah, there's a mystery guy in Ina's book, and it turns out to be Lux. That's, that's pretty cool. That's part of the, like the group of partisans. Like, they, they, like... in, they, they, the group of partisans they um infiltrate infiltrate undercover. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for, the for Steel pe- and Lux were love. For people who don't know, the first place Saw showed up wasn't Rogue One. It, it was, was the Clone Wars, and he looks nothing like him. <laughs> looks nothing. <laughs> well, they had to get. Uh, What's the, like... They had him age him up and make him old and disheveled. Well, when he gets older, he looks like... I assume that's a natural progression for someone getting older. Yeah, like... But what do you mean? They it's had a quite like a, the actor who played him? Well, I mean, it's just quite a time gap, so... Oh, yeah, it's a long time gap, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's just funny. Like, if oh, you're yeah. watching it and you're like... You wouldn't think it's Saw until he it, says his name. Especially if you've seen Saw before. Well, especially if you're not someone who, like pay super close attention and remembers every name that shows up. Because there's a lot of names. Like Lyra. 
Like, Lear, yeah. I'm sure. If you're, like, just, like, an average. Do you know what Jenner Swift's mom name is, Dan? Lyra. Yeah, it's Lyra. <laughs> Back from the dead. Back what a miracle. What a fucking miracle, man. <laughs> She's a wizard. That's that's a wizard moment for this episode, guys. Just kidding, it's not. But it is pretty wizard. <laughs> uh, and then we cut forward, presumably... Quite a few years. Fifty years. Jen is an old woman. She or she can't get her Medicare is not coming in. She's struggling to get her bills for her medicine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think with all the joking I'm making, I hate this movie, but I actually love this movie. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like we're <laughs> trying to steer away from talking about it. <laughs> now it's just for the continued bit of it, though, right? But Jen is in jail. The Jin Jail. Jin Jail. Jin Jin Jin. The Jin Jail on, uh, I don't remember the name of the planet, even though it flashed on screen. Uh, Chim Pokemon. Yeah? You know from South Park, the Pokemon in South Park? Chim Pokemon? Yeah. That's the name of the planet. No, it's Yavin. Jetta? Oh my god. Chase? Uh. Yeah, but Jin gets broken out of prison. (laughs) She's in a work camp. Yeah, and this is where we meet the one. The only. K2SO. 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 I really like how right when they free her, she just beats the shit out of all those guys. Right, like, at least, I, I don't understand that strategy. There's a bunch of dudes, they free you. You're like, I'm going to attack them. You don't know who's outside. <laughs> right, clearly. I feel like Jen in these movies, I like Jen a lot. But she's kind of dumb. Well, it was a point I'll make later in the movie once we get to scare if that the thing she does that doesn't make sense to me that could like totally backfired, but like, well, yeah. she, I mean, she didn't really have much of an education. Yeah, she was like, what, like eight, well, and then became she, a rebel. She, but she was like a rebel. She was like in the like the, she was a survivor. She should know how to like, survive. Maybe she, I guess she knows what she's doing. Maybe that's a good strategy. But to me, it just seemed like someone saved me. I'm gonna play it by ear before I start attacking them. See what happens. You well, know? I think her main concern is freedom. Yeah. And maybe they're taking her just to be another prisoner. Because keep in mind, she does know. I mean, she's going by a fake name. So long, she has to know how important. But if they're gonna if they're gonna make her a prisoner, why would they even take the cuffs off her? Maybe they're here to kill her. Then why would you take the cuffs off her? False sense of security. I don't know. I know the rebels aren't she the went, smartest, but like, I, if they're gonna well, kill her, why also would they she take... went around with Saw. Saw is the king of paranoia. Yeah, that's true. He is a paranoid motherfucker. Especially in this movie. This is his latest. So this is where he's just consumed by he's paranoia. Like, he's like so broken that he can't, like, he needs a suit to breathe and stuff. And then he's just like so paranoid by everything that's happening. He became a conspiracy theorist. I kind of like that, though. Oh, absolutely. I love Saw uh, I, I, I just love how uh, uh, K2SO just slams her into the ground. <laughs> just fucking chokes her. You're being her. rescued. <laughs> Try not to one resist. Of his, one of his many great lines in this movie. And then they put the cuffs back on her. <laughs> Because when they get to Yavin, she's in cuffs again. <laughs> Presumably because she beat the shit out yeah, of three that's guys. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm sure one of them died because she hit him with a fucking shovel. But also we knew, she didn't know, but like we knew they were getting her because she was Urso's daughter. Yes. But like, still. Like, I feel. Like but I imagine that could also be her logic for why fighting, because she probably knows that, I mean, she's going by a fake name, so she has to know that the Urso name is important. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why she would... I don't know. It's definitely not a smart decision, mm-hmm. but I could kind of see it. Yeah. I understand. It makes... It's not illogical, but it's also not logical. And then we get a... It's just a decision. The Cassian intro. Yes. I like, He's escaping. Uh, on the trading outpost that's two meteors tied... Or two asteroids tied together. Or not asteroids. Upside down. Uh, you can walk on the ceiling there. Ring. Rings of a planet. <laughs> The That's core. The word. They're not asteroids or meteors. They're just rings. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he shoots one of the rebels. One of his men. One of his men. To you think that's just to get him to because he knows that guy's fucked. Let's talk about this. Is he? What do you think? Is he killing him because he knows he's going to get caught by the rebels because he has a broken arm and he can't probably climb. And caught he's by fucked. the empire. Yeah, can be caught by the empire and to spare him having to deal with that, or to like save his own ass. I think both. Both? He he knows that that guy's not getting out no matter what, and if the Empire tortures him and finds out what he knows, it'll lead right back to Cassian. So Cassian's putting him out of his misery so he doesn't get tortured, but also to save his own ass. Yeah. In my I opinion. I see that. Yeah, probably. 
I could see it not being both, though. I could see it being one or the other. But I, 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 I feel like for him, it makes most sense to be both. Yeah. Because he seems like a smart dude. Yeah, he, he knows that, I mean, that guy's fucked. Yeah. His arm's broken. Put him out of his misery. and But he looks very conflicted about it when he does it. Yeah. And then he just has the, it'll be all right. It'll be all right, mommy. And then he just shoots him. <laughs> I mean, it will be all right. Mommy. He's free from the Empire. The Empire. Rises. Of Skywalker. Yeah. Star Destroyers. Pudding Pops. The Adventure of a Lifetime. Welcome to the cinema. <laughs> I don't know. I'm in a weird mood today, I was going to say, your brain is all My over the place today. My brain is all over the place today. <laughs> Remember how you said you were really tired at the beginning? Yes, I am really tired. This is how we know. This is how the viewers know. The viewers will either love this episode or love it. <laughs> I'm predicting the future. This will be our first episode that has a dislike. Because of me? No. <laughs> Probably Just no. in general. I'll just like it for us, just so we can <laughs> No! <laughs> I'll upload it and then immediately dislike it. You, you want to try... Never mind, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we... So Rogue One. We, before we get to Jetta, which is like the first bigger secret, we meet Saw. We meet... Bodhi. Bodhi. Bodhi is the... um. He's the pilot. He's the pilot. I'm the pilot. <laughs> I need to meet Sakurara. I love... He is so underrated, dude. The actor who plays him, Riz Ahmed, is so good. He commits to that, like... I don't know how to describe it, but, like... He's, like, very, like, jittery. Jittery. He's, like, very... It's very well acted. But, it's, like, you can do that and do be really bad. But Riz Ahmed... Great actor. True had low. to cancel both his photo ops at Star Wars Celebration, but that's okay. Is he okay? I don't know. He had to cancel him for something. Oh, okay. I just remember that. That both of his got canceled. I hope he's okay. Oh, yeah, he's fine. Okay. That was like six months ago. He just had probably... Well, I don't know why it what? got... Yeah. You know, you never know. Yeah. I don't know anything about these people. But he hasn't... Uh, right, I was going to say something. Never mind. But yeah. <laughs> because he is from one of my favorite... I can't call it a TV show, but it's a TV show, but it's only one season... It's an HBO miniseries. I highly recommend it. If you all out there looking for something to watch, it's not Star Wars. It's called The Night Of. It's about him. And he goes home with a girl one night. And he wakes up. And she's dead. And he doesn't know what happened. This is this is what happened before Rogue One? Yes. Okay. I highly recommend it. This is why he became a rebel. <laughs> you no, know, that's why he became that's why he went to the Empire, because he would be accepted. Oh, okay. I'm the pilot. I'm the pilot. I have to talk to Saw Gerrera. I also like seeing just how... Like, his, he's very good at using, like, having those weird mannerisms. Yeah. And I like the one point where he slaps, and he's like... Do it. In Scarif, he's like... Duh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like how this also shows just how paranoid Saw and all of his people are. Like, they drag him all the way to two tubes, and they're like... Uh, you know almost interrogating him already. And I love how he's just like, see past the uniform for a minute. I'm on your side. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about how we know how paranoid they are once we get to Jeddah. But... True. Yeah, like... But you see that little bit. Mm -hmm. There's one distinct moment for me where you know they're paranoid. But we'll talk about that once we get to Jeddah. Yes. And then, yeah. We Borgal. get Yavin. We get Borgullet too. Oh, we can talk about whatever. Borgullet, it happens. We don't want to talk about it. Yo, yeah, Yavin. Borgullet's just there. It's just there. We already pretty much talked about it. Yavin. What happens on Yavin? Uh, the rebel meeting with Jin. Oh, when Jin meets them for the first time. Yes. Yes. And they negotiate with her. They're like, oh, they, rebel. I rebel. <laughs> they call her by the fake name and they're like, you've been going by that, haven't you, Jin? Yeah. Calling her out <laughs> like, her bullshit. Rubbing it in her You're face. Liar. We caught you. We done did it. And then basically their whole logic is, well, you know Saw. Let's go meet him. <laughs> <laughs> because if we go and try to meet him, he'll just kill us. <laughs> because he's insane. Insanity. In the membrane. -ity. Insane in the membrane. So what's your favorite moment from <laughs> Beauty and the Beast? <laughs> oh my god. That moment, I so love then, So <laughs> then I go to the U. It's up to me to re-rail. Rerail. Rerail. That sounds like a very. I like to rerail things, you know? <laughs> Repeat railings. So then they go to the U Wing. <laughs> they have their whole little argument and they're like, 
Jin, you do this for us, you can go free. She's like, okay. She's like, I guess. I guess. She's probably, she's probably thinking, I can find a way to escape this. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. And you get... Then we get the great moment on the ship. Yes. This is probably one of my... Another great moment from this movie. Actually, yeah. I want, want, This is one of my favorite lines, but you discuss what you like about it. On the ship? Yeah. I just like everything K2 says on the ship. Yeah. Like, he's like... Why, why does she get a blaster, but I don't? <laughs> and he's like, she has a blaster? Where did you get that? Found it. <laughs> found, found it. <laughs> and and then, like, they sit down, and K2 is just like, he just looks back, and he's like, you're, you're letting her keep it? Do you want to know the odds of her using it on you? High. Very high. I mean, yeah. that's that's true. He's a, And he's like, oh, why would they believe in my opinion? My my. My specialty is just processing, or whatever he says. <laughs> and then he also has one of the lines earlier in the ship. He's like, I find that answer vague and unconvincing. Yeah. Just his delivery of that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, that one's pretty great. I mean, I'm so excited for the Cash and K2 show, dude. Yeah, it's that'll gonna be so good. That'll be great. I find that. But my favorite line in this, which hits home to me, which I love. Not I, as I, I know what it is now. What is it? Trust goes both ways. How do you know? <laughs> I know what lines you like once you start to talk about them. I'm like, oh, I know what he's talking about. Yeah, I love the line that trust goes both ways. But it's true in that moment. Like, you want her to trust, you don't trust her, but you want her to trust you. Like, you want her to trust you enough to go to a war zone unarmed. Right. Trust goes both ways. I just think it's a very good line in that moment and just in general in life. And it works. It works really Because he's well. like, fuck it, he's I guess like, you can keep it. Right. But yeah, then we go to part two, two, two. Jetta. Jetta. The holy city. The holy city of Jetta. Highlight of Jetta, Dan. Terrorism. That was the podcast last night. <laughs> but, um, no. Bays and True. We meet the squad. We meet them boys. Them the lovers. Boys. Them soulmates. They're not lovers. They love each other. Deeply. <laughs> not romantically, but Okay, deeply. okay. Yeah, they're not romantically involved, but they are. They have a deep love. They have for a each deep other. bond, a deep brotherly love. Yeah. Battle buddies. I, I love them. Sometimes you go. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I almost went too far there. <laughs> You'll have I to said, tell me off recording. Like I said, I'm in a mood today. <laughs> that, <laughs> is, that is a mood. God. Listen. But yeah. Babe, I. True might be my favorite character of these. He's obviously he's not less interesting, but I just love him because like I love the idea that he doesn't have force powers, but he believes in it so much that like it kind of works. It kind of works for him. I just love that about him. He has the most one of the most quotable things from these movies. So where is this? Is it I am the force? The force. I'm one with the force. The force is with me. I'm one with the force. The force is with me. I'm one with the force. The force is with me. Yeah, I, I love, love that. that so much. Yeah. I also just love that, you know, like you said, you know, because the Force, it exists everywhere. It exists in everyone. It's not just mm-hmm. the Jedi. It's not just the Sith. It's not just the Skywalkers. It's not just Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like, you know, like you have the Night Sisters as well, who are like another, they're not the Jedi or the Sith, but they have the Force, and it's yeah. different for them. You think that's what, do you think the people who hate Blast Jedi because, like, the forces with everybody, like, they didn't like Rogue One, too. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But, yeah, like, and for Chirrut, it's way more, like, it's, like, super religious for Chirrut. Like, yes, it's way like, more than for well, anyone yeah, else. I, like the, I, I always like that about the Force, how it's kind of religion. Yeah. For the, for, but more for him, like, it's, it's real to him. It's, like, super religious for him. Like, even more than anyone else, I feel. Yeah. And, like, I like the counterpoint. I, I like... Baze isn't super interesting, but their relationship is very interesting. Like, I love Baze's juxtaposition of just, like, yeah, it's not real. Yeah. He saw, and Chirrut has the line where he's like, Baze used to be the biggest believer out of any of us, but he's just been crushed by the Empire. Jaded and broken man. He's like, how can the Force let this happen? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, it's really just, like, when people, like, believe in God or whatever, they're like, but if God was real, why would they, he let these bad things happen, you know? He's like the dis- he's disillusioned like, he's like a, atheist. <laughs> yeah, he's like someone who fell out of Catholicism. <laughs> he's a Force atheist. Yeah, I love that. I like... And then he gets his faith back by the end. Yeah. But yeah. I we- love their, their... I love his... I love Chirut's little discussion with Jin. What was the discussion? Where he's again? like, they talk about the Kyber. Oh, yeah. He's like the strongest... 
suns are made of kyber. Yeah, the strongest stars are made of kyber. Yeah. And I just love how ever how she's just so confused. <laughs> it's, be ju- confused. it's just a blind guy calling out to her. And he's like and she's like, I see your necklace <laughs> or whatever. And he's like, Yeah, you, I'm talking to you, but he's like looking off into the distance. <laughs> And then you have the battle. You have terrorism. Yeah, the the Saws partisans or dreamers or whichever group they Extremist. are. Extremists. Extremists. The regime to destroy the beloved empire has taken its toll on Jedha. They are here to kill them. Is what? this the opening crawl? Yes, yeah, this is the opening crawl of this scene. Okay. Each scene has a crawl that I've made up exclusively for this. And yeah, that's the crawl. Okay. <laughs> you have the <laughs> sexy-ass tank commander trooper. God. They're three for three with with new stormtroopers guy. Guy, yeah, I, bud, 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 air Dumpa. bud, <laughs> Puddin. Puddin. Yeah, they're. I love the design of that tank as well. It seems mm-hmm. very. It seems way more effective than an ATST. Well, yeah, because those things just trip them. Yeah, the legs. Ewoks are, beat them. They have chicken legs, you know. Ewoks beat them. Hey, have some, no, the Ewoks are revered. Fighters. We'll get to they this. Have rocks. We'll get to this in Return don't of the respect, Jedi. Don't disrespect Chief Nebit and soon to be Chief Wicket. Chief Nebit is a Jawa. Fuck, you're right. Chief Chirpa, Chirpa <laughs> and Chief Wicket. Chief Nebit is my favorite Ewok. <laughs> you think Chief Nebit was in the Mandalorian? God, I hope so. He was one of the Jawas. Spoilers. Jawas being in Star Wars is not a spoiler. <laughs> Wow. We are talking about what happened. Spoiler. I'm, I'm trying my best to not talk about the one spoiler from the Mando that's impossible not to talk about. <laughs> so let's not. Yeah, but if you guys want to see Seven Sister without Second Sister without a helmet, just get on Twitter. <laughs> Gotta spoil it twice for me. Fuck that shit. <laughs> it made me so mad. That's the last thing I expect to see. You know what I mean? That happens fair. early and it's not super important, but still, come on now. It's been five days. I mean, at least it's not someone we already know, so it's not like... Video game takes 70 hours to beat, probably. Not that one, but like... You know what I mean? Video game's it's a, a long 20 time. hour. Is it really only 20 hours? It's like 20-30 is the estimate. Oh, shit. I'm almost halfway done now. No, you know where I'm at. Well, you also grinded for a long time. Grinded? Grinded. Yeah. Grounded. Grinded? Yeah, what's I'm the... I'm probably gonna be grinding a lot. Just, like, what's, the, what's the past tense of grind? Ground. That sounds weird. Grounded. I grounded in a game. You ever grounded before? Like, you, you never been grounded by your mommy and daddy? No. For um using the um too much for using paper. weed. For using for using the Mary Jane. For using for the using weed. The, for using the weed. People are gonna watch this and think we're fucking blazed. How do you know I'm not? I, you don't know what I did before you came over. <laughs> were you even awake before I came over? Yeah. For like twenty minutes, you just lit one up. No, I was awake for an hour. I was trying to. I was doing some max raids in Pokemon. I'm trying to find some Dyna, some Giga Max Pokemon. And I probably should have shouldn't have waited so long to have you come over, but I did. So Jetta. So yeah, if you look at the McDonald's menu, you'll notice. Uh, re-rail, 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 re-rail. I like that. Sound. I like the term re-rail. We got a re-rail Patent pending because we we had it derailed, and now I'm trying to re-rail. Yeah. So Jetta. I don't even remember what the fuck we were... Oh, the terrorism. Yeah. Sauce terrorists. You have a cool action scene there. Jin fighting with her... Sword. With her tanfa. With her tanfa. Well, I would call her baton. But she's a cop. It, she's not a cop. She. Fought, I like the, the bit when she shoots the, the KX drone, and it's not K2, and then oh, K2 yeah. just walks up and is like, Did you know that wasn't me? Of course. Of course. I'm not a cop. And you have the really great moment where K2 just catches a grenade and throws it back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so nonchalant, too. That's what I love about it. He's like, he's just talking and he just, like, throws a bag in there. It's like five dudes. Sure are a lot of explosions for two people blending in. But then they get caught, Dan. Well, for, yeah, then they get caught by the Empire. I thought they get caught by ca- Sauce people. Not yet. When we have the cool Chirrut fight scene first. Oh, no, the, oh, yeah, the Empire comes up on them. And they didn't get caught by them. Well, but they were almost caught. And that's where we get the infamous slap, which was not scripted, which was... Improv. Improv. And you can kind of tell Cassian was smiling there. Yeah. Because he did not see it coming, which was pretty brilliant. I think we were going to... Quiet! Mm-hmm. There's a fresh slap. one. Fresh one for you if you mouth off again. <laughs> it's so in character. Yeah. 
That's why they kept it, obviously, because it was so... K2. It was the most K2. <laughs> I like when he talks, when he's trying to, like, blend in. You can tell it's very sarcastic, but it, as a droid, it's not. It's just his voice. Yeah. I like how he's like, uh, they're prisoners. I'm taking them to prison to imprison them. <laughs> 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 and then you have the cool Chirrut fight scene. Which, Chirrut's badass. Chirrut's awesome. He's fucking... My one question about this scene is, is when he shoots the sand up in a stormtrooper's face, like, you have a helmet, bro. What are you acting like you just got fucking sand in your actual eye for? I mean, they can't hit anyone anyway. Yeah. Like, their accuracy rating is already, like, 10%, so... No, but, like, how are you acting like you're blind when that happens? Like, no, but I mean, like, even the slightest bit of clouding of their vision lowers that 10% hit chance to, like, a zero. No, it's not that, it's that he flinched. <laughs> yeah, he got scared. <laughs> That's if someone threw shit, in, if you had a helmet and someone threw shit at your face, wouldn't you get scared just as a natural reflex? Yeah, but I wasn't trained as a stormtrooper for years and wear a mask all the time. They're and I, they're not very highly trained. That's true. That's true. Throw that to the fallen order ones. That, <laughs> the regular, <clears throat> the regular stormtroopers in fallen order die in one hit. I know, but say so sometimes get you. <clears throat> I don't want to go off rails again. <laughs> re-rail, re-rail, re-rail. God, this is, either, this is either one of our best podcasts or one of our worst. That's how I feel right now. Well, I feel like just naturally because we get more used to podcasting, I feel like our first couple ones we were super awkward. Yeah. Because we're like, um, I like uh, Darth Vader because... Um, he calls me pudding. <laughs> yeah, like we're like <laughs> super like awkward in the first couple. At least we're... We feel more real here, even if it's probably really annoying that we just keep veering oh, off. No. That's what people are going to come here for. I hope so. The off the rails nonsense that we have. And then desperately trying to re-rail. But we are not film critics. No. We, we are cinema critics. <laughs> and Star Wars is top tier cinema. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, I think I got there it. was a god named George Lucas. Did he fuck up your childhood? Probably. But did he also save it? Probably. He's the ultimate, the creator of all the happiness and all the sadness in your life. So wait, we're cinema critics? Is that what you said? Yeah, not film critics. I, I think I gotta, we'll never review the Marvel movies. I, I think I gotta quit the podcast. That'd be funny if we actually were legitimately <laughs> yeah, edited if, right I, if I just walked and out. And we just ended it and posted it and we never posted for like two years and we post one day. Rise of Skywalker and New Hope. And then we just review... Martin Scorsese films. Oh, God. But, yeah. One of, the thing I was talking about earlier of how you know they're blind, because they true beats their ass. Then he's about to get fucked, and then Chase is there to save him. Chase. Chirrut. No. Baze. Baze. Sorry, fucking Galaxy Heroes fucks me <laughs> up. But he's there to save him, and... Bro, 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 sifts. They're, I, they're lovers. I, I love them. They're not lovers. You can love someone without wanting to fuck them. But the term lover is reserved for yes. romantic relationships. Yes. Yeah, I, I do love that. And he's like, you almost hit me. <laughs> like, it's so, like, sarcastic. I do really like, though, the part where, you know, they're paranoid. They put a bag in Shrewd's head. <laughs> and he's like, for God's sakes, I'm blind. Are you kidding me? I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truest level of paranoia. See, we got lucky because though, I don't know if you know this. The guys who play Chiru and Bayes, big movie stars in China and like in Europe and China. They're like the top movie stars over there. Really? And to us, they're just like these random people we've never seen before in movies. <laughs> like they're really known for like their fi- like kung fu movies and like at least Donnie Yen, the guy who plays Chiru. Oh, well, yeah, that makes sense. Bayes is a kung fu master too. I don't know, but like they're they're big over there and. And they were great in Star Wars. They should be in more movies in America. Too bad they died. And True should be in the next John Wick movie. That actor. Oh hell yeah! That'd be awesome. He needs to work for the um. What are they called? He can be one of the people at the high table. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> He's on the Jedi Council. <laughs> should this? Just, should we just change our podcast to like just review movie franchises exclusively? Once Red Skywalker is done, we never talk about Star Wars again. We just no. Really good John Wick movie. <laughs> no, no, And then no, we do, no. like, the Garfield cinematic universe. No. Yes. And then the Air Buddy cinematic universe. <laughs> and then we go to the Air Bud cinematic universe. Because I don't know if they're connected. Air Buddies and Air Bud, probably, since it's all the same. And then the di- the good dinosaur. Not the good dinosaur. That's a Pixar film. Land Before Time. Land Before Time cinematic universe. You did, knew where I was going. Did you know that there's only three less movies in the Air Bud universe than there are in uh, MCU? Marvel? 
Dude, that's brilliant. I want to watch all of them. <laughs> Review them. In-depth analysis. It would just be this, this bullshit going off rails the whole time. But it'd be f- so fun. <laughs> and I wouldn't have to re-rail there, because I wouldn't give a shit. <laughs> See, this is the first time our audience is experiencing us go off rails, except one of our audience members. They're used to that by now. True. But, like, this is off the rails. The most natural. Yes. So, the, yeah. Let's stop talking about how bad we're doing and just continue. <laughs> re-rail, 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 re-rail. So, um, so the dice are important. So. <laughs> Saw has the dice. Little did you know. Uh, so they, yeah, they get captured. Then they get captured immediately by Saw's guys because Ben Thick saw Cassie <laughs> Thick. <laughs> saw Cassie and shoot one of the partisans. Mm-hmm. So they they obviously put the bags over their heads and take them to Saw. And then, is this a word? Yeah, and they're, they're I'll let, Saw's I'll, place. You love Saw. I'll let you handle the Saw part. Uh, I'll, I'll probably miss something, but that's just who I am. I'll bring it up if you miss something important. Yeah, they're captured. And Jin's talking to him, you know. Stuff's happening. Baze, Baze and Shrew and them are in the cage. The jail. The jail, and then they realize the pilot's over there, and Baze just wants to kill him because he's the Imperial pilot. But then Cassian stops him, he's like, Go away, go away! And he's like, but also, actually, another great line. Base says to Cassian here, and the thing, talking about being in prison, because the truth's like, oh, this is nothing. We've been in worse prison than this. And Cassian's like, it's the first for me. And then Base says the line. Cassian, or Truth says the line. No, Base says the line. Truth says that line. But then Base says the line to Cassian, I feel like you are you carry your prison wherever you go, with you wherever you go. No, Truth said that. I thought Base said that. No. No, I'm pretty sure Base said that. No, Truth said it. Are you sure? Positive. Because Truth said, I sense you carry your cage with you wherever you go. I swore it was Baze. No, then Baze, like, snickered at him. After Truth said that. He I got... think it was Baze. We're gonna look this up. Yeah, look it up. Let's talk about Beauty and the Beast while we look this up. It's on. You have the script on your phone. No, I was on my computer, but I can pull it up. I thought you had it up when you were looking at the other quote. Yeah, that was on my laptop. But you were just looking at it when you read the quote. No, I copied and pasted it. And put uh-huh. it in the document. <laughs> I swear it was Baze. It was true. You want to make you want to you want to make a bet on this? What's a fun bet we can do? Um, if you're right, we just derail for the next hour. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm right, we have to talk about Rogue One. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I think it was true. <laughs> No. I'm the Lorax! Yeah, I swore it was Baze for some reason. The strongest stars have hot Sakaiba. Top five troop quotes, ready, go. <laughs> there is more than one sort of prison, Captain. I sense that you carry yours wherever you go. Damn it, you were right. Really? <laughs> now we gotta talk about Rogue One! Ooh, of course Yay! I don't need luck, I have you. He says that to Baze. That's hot. That's hot. That's hot. The rest of these quotes are dumb. Well, no, I'm one with the force with me. I'm one with the force, the force, force with me. me. I'm one with the force, force with me. I'm one with the force Shit, man, you're white, man. I'm the Lorax! Is that a good impression? Of the Lorax? From yeah. Dr. Seuss's The Lorax? Yeah. You don't sound like... You Specifically could, the book You version. could do a better Danny DeVito than that. No one can do a better Danny DeVito than That's Danny true. DeVito. But yeah. Talk about a true sexual Tyrannosaurus. Yeah, that scene happens. Re-rail, re-rail. Re-rail, re-rail. But yeah, um, I love that scene. Then when Jin's talking to Saw, and they're kind of like bickering because she's like, you abandoned me. And just, Saw's like, no, you were ready. Or whatever. She's like, I had to worry about the people who weren't couldn't survive on their own or whatnot. And then... They want to take you hostage. Mm-hmm, yeah. But she's important. Yes. And he, he, he was becoming... Well, I feel like it's a weird conflict of like, yes, she was becoming a liability for him, but you said you'd take care of her, so... Yeah, do we commit to your word, bro? You yeah, know what I mean, Saw's great, but like, like Saw's a very flawed person. Oh, absolutely. But, That's what makes him great. Yeah, and yeah, we coming up. I want the my favorite parts of cinema, no. of this film, of this piece of art, this piece of cinema. As she's getting the message from Gay, she's getting the message from Galen. 
about because Bodhi had it, then Saw took it, yeah. and then he showed it to her about the plan how to destroy the Death Star, and then something happens. Dan, your boy, Director Krennic, is ready to blow up the whole planet of Jetta. I do love the line that Tarkin has here, where he says, "No, just the Holy City will do. I will want we want a statement, not a manifesto." Yeah, it's a good line. That's I like the word manifesto. <laughs> I only associate the word manifesto with, like, serial killers. Yeah, as I say, that makes me think of school shootings. <laughs> which is not good, but... I mean, but they're talking about blowing up a planet, yeah, 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 so... Yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah, um... Yeah, and then... he They strike Jetta. They're talking. It's starting to blow up. And then everyone's like... We very, need... very beautifully shot. Oh, yeah, it's gorgeous. I love seeing the Death Star eclipse the sun. Oh, that was a great shot. And then the... I love when they, when they all get in the ship and it's flying and just the wreckage just coming yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. But while this is happening, Saw's like, you gotta get out of there. You've got to go. And Jin's like, you gotta come with us. He's like, I'm done fighting, or whatever he says. I'm done running. I'm done running. And he's there. And then he says the four greatest words in this movie. How many words? Six. Six. He says... <laughs> I forgot about the. The word the. <laughs> I'm such a... He says the six greatest words in this movie with his beautiful raspy tone. He says, Save the rebellion. Save the tree. Save rebellion. Save tree. Save rebellion. <laughs> Forget the buzz. I just love that line so much. And it just... I don't know. It just resonates with me. It gives me chills. It, yeah. I, I feel like it especially comes down to just the way it's delivered. Mm-hmm. The super raspy just... It, Save the tree. At Star Wars Celebration, remember when they were having everyone go around and give their favorite quotes from Star Wars? Where we were waiting for one of the panels? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we weren't in the upper deck and we were down there... I was <laughs> you would have screamed. I wanted to say that. And I would have done the voice and everything. Save the rebellion. Save the rebellion. Save the tree. <laughs> Well, I was. If I would have handed it to me. I would have said, "Hello, Delo Felagus." <laughs> I think someone did say that actually. I, someone probably did. I love. I, I love. What, I think someone said like a rose line too, just to piss people off. And never the audience clapped though because Star Wars Celebration mostly. Yeah, you don't want to be an asshole there. Even if they don't like rose, I don't think they're mad about it. You know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I love those little games that we had. Mm-hmm. Fun times. Fun times. Can't wait till August. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I feel like I was all about that line even before the movie came out. Well, it was yeah. The trailer. Yeah. You were quoting that, like, <laughs> as soon as the trailer It's just dropped. so, such a beautiful line. Just, I love that. You, you managed to say it every week. For, like, for like a year? Yeah. It's coming back, maybe. Every week for at least six months, and then, like, every other week for the, like, <laughs> for the next six months. It just slowly pittered out. Right. That's what most of our things do. They just slowly pitter out. Yeah. I, so just, yeah. I just love that line, you know. Save the rebellion. Gives you hope. I love the rebellion in this movie so much. <laughs> and I like I like how Saw just he just looks at the the rocks as they're coming in and he just takes his breathing thing off. And he just lets it take him. I just love take the, me. I love the optimism. Because I will try to be an optimistic person most of the time. Especially when life is just keep punching you in the face, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The rebellion. They just keep being punched in the face. But like the fact that Saw is just like Save the dream. Rebellion's the dream. Being free is the dream. I just love it. Because I know, like, last two years in my life, I've just been punched in the face. Punched in the face. You gotta stay optimistic, you know? Save the rebellion. Save the rebellion. That's why I also say all the time, we're like, what, 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 anytime we do something, and I'm like, you're like, probably not gonna happen. Like, long shot. I'm like, rebellions are built on hope. <laughs> I say that all the time, don't I? Yes, that's another one. This movie has a lot of quotes. I would just say that someone at work once. And I'm like, I don't talk at work. I'm like, rebellions are built on hope. But yeah. And they're, they're just like, what? are you a terrorist? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why are you growing that beard out? I'm like, I don't know why I'm too, I'm just been too lazy to shave, you know? Yeah, sure. 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 Rerail. 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 That's the dice of this episode, the rerail. This is like we're just on fucking crack or something. (laughs) You you want some? No, don't say it on air. No, I'm just kidding. It's a joke. (laughs) FBI watching. It's a joke. But for real, do you know where I could know? (laughs) Yeah, there's a motel a couple blocks over, but you could go to. 
the Motel 8, the Motel 45. Sure. Motel 15. I just want to be at every motel to be a motel, but with a number. So Jetta. <laughs> so Jetta. So they fly. So they're flying away. Flying away. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest episode of anything we've ever produced. I don't know about you, but I'm having fun. Oh, I'm having fun. I can't wait to listen to this back while editing. <laughs> Dream. What's the? I'll just get so pissed because every time we almost get on track, we just veer <laughs> off for like ten minutes. Well, this is like the most real us that we are. Oh, absolutely. This is the realest we've ever been on the podcast. But like you said, we're not critics, so it's yeah. not like we're giving any hot takes. I have never ending story now stuck in my head. You know the song "Never Ending Story" from the movie "Never Ending Story." So they fly away. <laughs> <laughs> And they contact the rebellion, and they're like, "We're coming in hot. Get the fighters ready." It, no, oh, okay. <laughs> they're like, "We got to go to Edu, because that's where Bodhi said that Galen was." Mm-hmm. But guess who else is going to Edu? Bill Kranike. Kranik. Kranike. To go figure out who who was sold the leak. them out. Yeah. Because at this point, Tarkin's like, "I'm taking control of the Death Star. It is my." So he's like, this is my achievement. You stand here amidst me. No, that's one of his great lines to credit. We stand here amidst my achievement. His delivery. Not yours! His delivery is so good. And he just like stomps up to Tarkin. I love that. Oh, we really talk about Tarkin. Tarkin is really the epitome of the guy who's part of the group project and just puts his name on top at the end. Right. He did nothing to build the Death Star, but was just like, it's mine. control now. To be fair, that's a very good bureaucratic thing. We didn't talk about that. Tarkin's full CG. Yes. His actor's dead, obviously. Yes. Because he was old back in New Hope. Let's we'll talk about that. Because before, when we went to see Rogue One, we weren't really like as in the Star Wars news. So like We honestly did not know he was going to be in the movie. Yeah, there were, it, it, was it was a big thing, right? Yeah, apparently it was a big thing that he was like a lot of people knew yeah we didn't we didn't follow like the the star wars news super well back then yeah i was floored when i saw it i was like i I didn't think they actually show his face without they just like go from behind and use it you know what i mean i didn't even think they would put him in yeah it was it's not bad it's oh absolutely it's sometimes it's a little like not very well but like yeah nothing that's like off-putting yeah it was definitely it's better than the leia one at the end yeah, the Leia one looks a little weird. The Leia one does look a little weird, but also the it's Tarkin one was around a lot longer. Yeah, they probably so they had to make sure it looked better. Yeah, because Tarkin was in for actually quite a bit. Because mm-hmm. you know he's he's the the rival to Krennic almost, yeah, but I'll, he's higher up. Yeah, the Grand Moff. The Grand Moff. I don't. Know a rank that literally had to be created just for Tarkin. Was he's he's a Moffin. He's a Moffin. <laughs> Moffs existed, but there was no Grand Moff. Yeah, like um. Mothma, mom. Mothma. Moth, mothma. <laughs> sure, man. Sure. Let's go get some more doobies, bro. We need, a, we need to reblaze. My, I think I'm losing my fire. We need to rechase. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And that's Jetta, pretty much. Yes. So you ready for post-Jetta? You do? Yeah. This should be quick, and then we'll just get to Scarif, because that's the meat of this. Yeah. Yeah, there's not too much to talk about on Edu. I do like... Uh, uh, they, you know, they get, they have the little confrontation on the Ewing where, like, Jin explains what was on the holo- hologram, and Cassian's like, well, you got the hologram, right? Mm-hmm. And she didn't have it, and he's just like, so we just have to put everything on your word? The daughter of the guy who's The daughter of the guy who we're here to get? And he's like, I don't want you to, like, and it goes back to the trust thing, but, like, he's like, you don't gotta convince me. You gotta convince everyone else. The rebels, like the leaders in the rebellion. You gotta like, convince the council. The Jedi get so. <laughs> Which is very true. I mean, what you're gonna like in the count in the in the rebel shoes? I ain't trusting the word she says about her dad. Mm-hmm. It's her dad. <laughs> Until you provide proof. I trust Jen. Well, but I mean, as the audience, yeah, because we saw it. Because we saw it. But I mean, as like the I rebel understand leader, why Cassie does it. Well, I think Cassie, I think Cassian does believe her, but he's like, you gotta, you can't, you gotta, you don't have to convince me. Yeah, well, I think he, I think he, he, he knows that she's not lying. Yeah. He just knows he has orders. Mm-hmm. And then they crash on Edu. 
Bodhi giving some solid flying instructions to K2. Yeah. The crash. The crash and uh and Cassian is like, Alright, we're gonna we're gonna go out as a small team, Bodhi and me. That's it. Mm-hmm. And then they go out and then uh, Ch- Troop has the line about the force being you could tell has does he look like a killer? Yeah, and it's like he's like the the force moves darkly around a, a creature who's about to kill. And then Jin gets concerned. When K2 points out, he did have a sniper rifle. And then she gets in her best outfit, the raincoat and the goggles. <laughs> and gets on the... And leave. And gets on the ladder. The ladder and climbs She climbs up. all the way down to climb all the way up. And while this is happening, they since they crash, they can't talk to the base at Yavin. So K2's trying to repair the radio. But Yavin is not getting anything, so they send... X-Wings and Y-Wings. Yeah, they send fighters towards Edu. Edu. Because they're like, all right, well, because the guy who told Cassian to kill Galen is like, all right, well, we got to kill him. Send in some fighters. Fighter Z? Yeah. Hell yeah. I, because, like, I love the Z-Wing. Is that a thrill ship? Maybe. I'm going to design it tonight, then. I know the V-Wing is. I know the B-Wing is. What about the Q-Wing? X, Y, A. 007 wing? Um, Bantha wing? I think there's an R-Wing. Um, L-Wing? I don't think there's an L wing. A wing wing. Wingdings. A wing wang. Wang wang. <laughs> so, so I do also like the scene when Chirrut leaves the U wing and he's like, Jin's path is clear and and Baze is like, What you're going out alone? And he's like, No. I got you. <laughs> but then I also like K2 is just like, if Cassie comes back before they do, we're leaving without him. <laughs> Cause Baze and Chirrut just kind of Joined because there was nowhere else to go when the earth was about to crush them. Yeah, they're just growing up. They're just, <laughs> they're just up. They just like showed up there. Well, I think I think he noticed something about Jin. Like, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Necklace, yeah. So he, I think he wants to be there. No, yeah, but, he wants to be there. But I mean, from the, the point of the, like the, Cassian and K two and them, it's like uh, they just kind of joined because there was nowhere else to go. Yeah, and they're like we're always looking for help in the rebellion. And yeah. of course. I, we didn't really talk about this, but Bays and True were, were guardians of the wills. It was their job to protect the Kyber, the Jedi old Jedi Temple with the Kyber crystals on Jedi, where the Empire had pretty much picked it clean. And there's so there's left nothing to left to defend. Which is interesting because I'm I always thought before this that all the Kyber came from Ilum. Hmm. I was I was under the impression that all the Kyber came from Ilum. What's Ilum? The, the ice planet where Jedi go to get their lightsabers. Oh, like in that Clone Wars episode? Yep. Well, where little Chewie gets his lightsaber? Yep. Not literally Chewie, but little Wookiee Boy. Little Wookiee Boy, yeah. He's the best one of the belt, best hilts in the Star Wars. Yeah, it's just made the out of wood. Because it's made out of a Kashyyyk wood, which is as strong as steel. I'd buy that lightsaber. Yeah. But, like, uh, so it's interesting that there's kyber crystals on Jedi. Yeah. That's cool. I'm no, saying I like kyber it. crystals everywhere. No, well, it's implied that they're very rare. Yeah. I was just under the impression Island was the only place. But then again, again... Do you think there's any in Fallen Order, any of the Zepho temples he's looking at? Are they called... The, the people are called the Zepho, right? Yeah. Okay. Maybe? I don't know. You're like, I've already beat it. You haven't? Let's not talk about it. Yeah, let, let's not talk about the plot We of will Fallen do Order. a Fallen Order review. Yes. I've already beaten it. He has not. Yeah. I probably should Blame him. That. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> I don't think they're clamoring for our review of Fallen Order. <laughs> I don't think anyone's clamoring for... Yes. We we just do this podcast to make 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 it feel like people actually care and want to listen. You know, we know of at least two. Yeah, and yeah. they're both people we know in real life. Yeah, I'm still waiting until we get a, like a dedicated fan that, that's not someone that isn't know. someone we know. Yeah, if that you smash that like, smash it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I scare you. you scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Share on Google Plus. That's been it's been the <laughs> but yeah. Oh boy, humdingers of derails. God, this is gonna be longer than I wanted it to be. I was like, this is gonna be quick. We're gonna get in. We're gonna get out. No, <laughs> no, off the rails, babe. What do you want to get to eat after this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's continue. So Galen gets bombed. Yeah, he dies. So Cassian has the struggle of trying to shoot. Galen, Galen, and just can't bring himself to do it. Mm-hmm. He's conflicted, and plus he's not getting a great shot either. Yeah, he doesn't have a good angle, really. Mm-hmm. And then he had... Because because he's trying to get a good angle, he has the time to, like, process it and be like, man, this is a shitty thing to do. 
Right. I'm going to murder this girl's father right in front of her. The woman I love. The woman I love. I don't know if they actually love each Who other. Who I will marry and conceive Ray with. Ray, Ray. Then and he so dies. he doesn't shoot. Yeah, and then, then the the X-Wings and them show up and they bomb. Jin gets to the top. They have a good cry together. Yeah, they have a good little cry. Like, I love you. She threw a stormtrooper off the, the rail. Yeah, very easily. <laughs> well, I mean, it was raining. Yeah. Stormtroopers be dumb. And there's no there's no guardrails. The Imperials are not about that safety standard. Like the Death Star, there's no guardrails anywhere. Yeah. People just be falling all the time, dude. <laughs> <laughs> then yeah, they get back to the plane. They have that conversation I was talking about that I love. They get to a new plane, you mean? Yeah, they get to a new plane and they have that conversation where Jin and Cassian are fighting. Because Bodhi's a rebel now. Because Bodhi's a rebel now. He stole his Zeta shuttle and then massacred a bunch of stormtroopers with it. Hell yeah. I like you also see Bays just mowing motherfuckers down. I love his gun. His blaster's so cool. But I yeah. like that it has a backpack. I love a backpack. And I like how right after their argument on the, on the Zeta shuttle, Cassian looks at everyone else and he's like, anyone else? <laughs> he's like so defensive at this point. Oh, Cassian by the end of the conversation. Yeah. There's like he's, and then he's I like, making valid points. She's oh, making absolutely. valid points. You lied to me. And then Baze just reclines back. Right. You're like, I don't, I don't, I don't want any of this shit. Because he tries to play it off in the beginning, like you don't know what you're talking about. What's yeah. going on? And then yeah, I had orders. Jin keeps calling him out on it. Yeah, I had orders. Orders that I disobeyed. You wouldn't understand that. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. I just love that moment. That's one of my favorite parts of the movie. Honestly, by far. That's pretty good. I love that scene. So, so yeah, that's post Jetta. <laughs> Man, we covered Edu so well. There's not much. No, there. I know, I know. We can't talk about everything in uh, detail uh, for hours. I'm aware. Only the McDonald's menu. Next episode, baby, <laughs> review the McDonald's menu. What's the secret <laughs> items? Where do you? Where... <laughs> What if, what if with each episode we just get more and more off rail until like by the time that we get to Last Jedi we don't even say the name of the movie throughout the whole episode? Hello, welcome to the Holocron Cast where we talk about everything. Sometimes <laughs> Star Wars, but mostly the McDonald's menu for breakfast. What's with you and the McDonald's menu right now? I don't know. It's the first thing that came to my mind. You want to talk about the Chick Fil A menu? They got some quality mac and cheese now. <laughs> they do. Okay. <laughs> Oh, then they, uh, they, we go to the, um, I'm all fucked. I don't know what's going on anymore. I'm all fucked up now. We should talk about Scarif now, really. We talk about everything okay, else. Okay. The, okay. They go, they go to the meeting where we, we get rebellions. Right. Built they, on go, hope they go back to Yavin. We're in Yavin. We're like, oh, yeah, rebellions are built on hope. And someone's like, someone said something dumb about hope. Someone had a bad comeback to that. I don't remember what it was though. What is she proposing? What is she proposing? We, we we build an army and get fighters and not fight? What? I love that. It's like, fuck, you right. You shit, man. Why? Well, yeah, yeah. But then they're like, if the council doesn't agree. We do nothing. We do nothing. So we side with half of the council then. Which, which is flawed. <laughs> You need at least 60% of the vote. So know? we have, so like, they're like, we're split on this decision. And our rule when we can't agree is, is we just do nothing. But that's what one of the voter that's what one of the sides wanted anyway. Yeah. Mom Moth was a dumb. <laughs> a singular dumb. You see, everything would be great if they put Bale in charge. Bale's the G. Rest in peace, my brother. Yeah, he we, we, we see him go back to Old Ron where he's about to die. In we officially days. confirm <laughs> that he died will be there. if there's like a comic, he's like on the way back, he's like I'm gonna go to I'm gonna pick up some I'm groceries. Gonna, I'm gonna go check on I'm going to check on Obi-Wan and the child. <laughs> and he just goes to Tatooine. And he just never leaves because he can't find them. Yeah, and then he's like, shit. Oh, when he hears Alderaan gets blown up, and he's like, Brea. But well, then Brea somehow found a way out, and then they're all just not on the thing. Yeah. I feel like if Bale, if they, for some reason they make it canon that he didn't go straight back there, they have to figure out a way to get his wife off there. So you either kill Bale and his wife, or you don't kill either of them, you know? Both of them or none of them? No, I could see them killing his wife, but no, not why him. why just kill his wife? What, what'd she do wrong? Because then you have a moment for Bale to be sad. But he thinks his daughter's dead. Yeah, so he gets crushed. And then he becomes a fucking Sith Lord. <laughs> You're gonna say that he becomes an alcoholic. 
No, I, can, I, think, I think he's an alcoholic. But yeah. The Battle of Jetta. I mean, the Battle of Scarif. I do like the scene when they all gather, and they're like a bunch of the rebels who want to go to Scarif anyway, even though they were all forbidden. Mm-hmm. And Cassian's like, I couldn't live with myself if... I just let the if I just let the rebellion go after all all the shit I've done for it, mm-hmm. and same with thing with all the people behind him because they're all scoundrels, scoundrels, saboteurs, assassins. You know they're all like shady people. All the people going with them. Yeah, that because Cassian was like motioning to them when he was mm-hmm. talking about that. And while we're walking this moment, we hear over the intercom, General Sindula, please report to blah blah blah. Yeah. And do you know who that is? Hera Sandula. I thought it was Cham. That'd be cool, too. <laughs> Remember before we had finished Rebels, we thought it might have been Cham? Because we weren't sure. Did he die in Rebels? Cham? No. Uh, yeah. I just mean we didn't know if Hera would become general. Yeah. So we're like, maybe it's Cham. That's true. But, uh, and I then think... you have the great line where K2's like, I'm with you, Jid. Cassian says, I have to. <laughs> so it's a good line. <laughs> He's like an eight-year-old kid being told by his mom to go sit in the corner and share his peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> oh, you don't share peanut butter with other people. Mom said I had to. It's messy. It's not a shareable food. <laughs> well, you both... You both put your own bread and your own sandwich. No, you both eat the same peanut butter. That's hot. You baby you bird it. You share with the dog, too, but he'll just get stuck on his tongue. You baby bird it. To the dog? <laughs> no, to each other. Oh. Why would you baby... That's disgusting. Why would you baby bird it to a dog? Because it'll get stuck on its tongue. Because it can't eat peanut butter. That's disgusting. But it's not disgusting when you baby bird the person. No. I'm, the dog's not giving it to me. I'm giving it to the dog. That's disgusting. You're disgusting. The truest sign of friendship is when you can baby bird with each other. <laughs> You're not wrong. I'm in full derail mode now. Yeah. So, so scared. Let's rank the movie now. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the battle. There's a battle on Scarif. The rebels break through. They realize stuff is happening. Animal Rad is like, "Fuck, there's rebels there. I'm 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 bailing out. Let's go help these. Save the rebellion, Dan. Save the dream. Let's do this." <laughs> Don't have a stroke on me now. <coughs> <coughs> So Radis follows them to Scarif because he's like, fuck these motherfuckers who are just going to sit around and do nothing. Because we will all die if we don't get these plans. All of us. Every single, single one. one. And can go Tusken Raider on them. Do you be the ultimate twist if they got the plans and they were, like, Jen was just wrong and Galen lied? And that was just his way to suck in the rebellion and just mow them down? And it and it, it rewrites episode four. <laughs> but yeah, the battle. What do you like about the battle, Sam? I like that this is really one of the you know, other than episode three, this is one of the first times where we get like an actual full on space battle. Mm-hmm. Like the trench run is a great space scene, but it's not really a space battle. I talked about this in the episode three podcast. Because it's really just a couple fighters. Mm-hmm. But in this one it's, you know, it's a lot of fighters and it, you know, because we never get to really see the Battle of Endor, so we don't really get any shit battles in the original trilogy. You have the the dumb one in Phantom Menace mm-hmm. that's really bad. The Sack of the Clones doesn't have a space battle. Three, you finally get one, but you don't get too much of it. This one, we finally get like a full-on space battle, and I really like that. And a ground battle at the same time. Yeah, and a ground battle at the same time, which Scarif is a great setting for a battle. We got them... Scarif troopers on the ground. Shore troopers. Shore troopers. We got we got Scarif some... Rebel Pathfinder. Hell yeah, yeah. Where's um where are the Death Troopers in this battle? What are they up to? Are they protecting Krennic? They're they were with Krennic until um Jin and Cassian get into the vault and then Krennic's like, Alright, deploy my squad into battle, you two with me. It, don't we get a shot of them in the water, the Death, the death troopers, troopers? Yeah, they or... they jump out of the TIE Reaper into the water. I love the Death Troopers, man. Yeah. They dummy thick. I love how they just, as soon as they land, they mow everyone down. <laughs> right? They just, like, the Rebels... They're the ones that base fights at the end. Yeah. The Rebels are, like, fucking everything up. Even when the AT-ACTs come in, which are basically... Is that, like, the AT, like, exam to become a... Like, you have to take the AC... A- no! <laughs> you have to take the AT-ACT to become an actual AT-AT. Like, that's their test. The AT, you know, like, the ACT you have to take to get into college. So they have to take a test to become an actual AT-AT. 
you couldn't have sounded more like being on cocaine than you did in that particular sentence. <laughs> but for, for those of you who don't know, the reason why X-Wings can just blow up these uh, at is because they are actually... AT-ACTs. They're a variant of at <laughs> called AT-ACTs, and they're a bit frailer because they're meant for hauling cargo. Because obviously Scarif has the shield gate. They're not really... Mm-hmm. Nothing's really super meant for battle there. And since they only carry cargo, they're like, let's make their legs thinner. Well, I don't the know arm- if they actually did that. The armor's thinner yeah. all around. Because they it, it's expensive to make them super thick. Yeah. And that's why U Wings and X Wings just shred them like nothing. Mm-hmm. Because they're a lot they're not you know, they're not the assault for anyone curious. You can tell because they have the like brown coverings on the sides. Yeah, there's a little like yeah. I actually think they are I think they're a little bit bigger than normal AT as well. Yeah, like I think both. A little bigger and a little taller. A little thicker? A little no. Are they dummy thinner. thick? They're thinner. I like the term dummy thick. The death troopers are dummy thick. Hell yeah. And yeah, so you have a really cool ground battle. You have Vistan screaming <laughs> on the turret. Uh just really cool. I love the battle. I, yeah. I love. I the, love seeing stormtroopers in water. I love. We're not used to seeing them in a water setting. I love the beach setting. I love seeing like an love actual the sky. They had a waterfall. I love whenever we get to see like ground battles in Star Wars too. Like actual like big. Like hey, we can't bite between like a lot. Of, <laughs> not even going to touch that between like a, a large number of soldiers on both sides. Like, again, we get it in a, a bit in the prequels, but, you know, we don't really get it much until episode three, and then, like, at the end of two, where we finally get some real big ground battles. I always like seeing the ground battles. Yeah. Like, on the bigger scale, mm-hmm. instead of just following one character's specific journey through it. Yeah. I like, I like the team aspect. We're, we're with the squad. Yeah, we're with the squad. There's no single protagonist, even though it's clearly Jin, but... Yeah, yeah. And now people start dying. Every single one of the characters dies. As soon as they're done being useful. Yes. Let's start with K2. He's the first He's hero. the first one. So they're about to be locked into the vault and a bunch of stormtroopers come up. And they're like, like Cassian and Jen are like, fuck, what's the name of the plan? This is, I just want to bring this up now. I don't know why. He's like, someone calls Sarda. She's like, that's it. Why? That's me. <laughs> and Cassian locks the doors there and they're doing that. And then... Yeah, K2 locks the doors because stormtroopers are pouring in now. And K2 just takes out like 50 of them. <laughs> K2 really messed them up. No, he... I love how he picked the one up and just hit the other ones with them. Yeah. And then threw them at the other one. And then when he gets shot, he just does the quick draw and turns around and blasts him. Mm-hmm. K2 took a lot of hits. Oh yeah, he, he dummy thick too. He dummy thick. Yeah, he took a lot of hits, and then in his last moments, he blows up the terminal so that the Empire can't open it. Yeah. Cassian, I, I mean, K2, you gave your life for the cause, and we will forever respect you. And when Cassian, like, realizes that K2's dying, he's like, K? K? And he, like, runs back towards the door. And then he jumps off the side and kills himself. Because <laughs> he can't live without K. Damn. No. Uh, then next to die is uh, Bodhi, right? No, Chirrut. No, it's Bodhi. No, Chirrut, and then Bodhi, then Baze. Because Baze doesn't die until he sees the shuttle blow up after Chirrut's dead. Because Chirrut, yeah, right. Chirrut needed to turn the handle so yes, Bodhi could yes, talk to... Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so Chirrut... We a little stupid. Me a little, me a little slow. <laughs> we just fucking watched this movie and we... <laughs> Yeah, so Chir- I don't retain knowledge that's not about people I know very well, other than the uh, you know what I mean. I don't retain knowledge very well. Like if someone tells me something, I remember it, or I like you know what I mean. But like if I watch stuff, I don't retain it very well. I only retain it for if it's Star Wars. Yeah, I only retain it if it's um. You're about to say something. It only fits for the only thing I like retain knowledge from is like you know remember the hit Disney Channel program Out of the Box. Out of the box. That was a kids program where they had to get out of the box. So Death Troopers, so Death Troopers, dummy thick, are surrounding the little council that they need to flip the leather, the the leather, the, the leather. leather, the leather, le- the leather lever. And the, and I like the part where they're like, "We gotta flip that switch." And one guy's like, "All right, I'm going." And he takes one step and gets shot. So what does the force wielding troop do? He trusts in the force, even though he doesn't wield it. 
and he slowly walks out. I'm one with the force, the force with me. I'm one with the force, the force with me. I'm one with the force, the force with me. I'm one with the force, the force with me. And the <laughs> no, I, was, I wanted you to keep going. Oh, I'm, I'm one with the force, the force with me. I'm one with and the no, whole... I don't, don't want to. <laughs> okay, that would be distracting. <laughs> I thought it was a good bit. And the whole time he's walking, death troopers are just missing, and they're like precision marksmen. Yeah, like they have the death mark. Like we see, the previous guy took one step and got shot. Yeah. So this is obviously meant to be like the force is Wills willing. It. It. Yeah. And Troop flips the switch. Gets blown to pieces. Gets blown up. And Bodie can finally contact Admiral Radis. Who is the best capital ship owner in the galaxy. Best best ship commander in, in Star Wars history, in my opinion. I was waiting for you to say the name of the race. Ama Akbar. The race. Calamari Kids. Mon Calamari. Mon Calamari Kids. That's what I thought you were trying to get at, but you just couldn't remember the name of the race. Nah, I can't remember. Well, obviously. But so, yeah. Yeah, Radis is pretty great. And then Bodhi. And then like, Bodhi gets blown up right after. After he plugs in the thing, the ship gets... We yeah, have some respect to Bodhi. He, oh, yeah. He plugs the thing in, he does his job, and then he claps. He's like... Get, get. And then, because he's telling someone to go plug it in, then they die, and then he has to go plug it in, and then he runs back, and then he plug, he, he talks to Radis, tells him the plan, tells him what they need to do, and they need to blow the, the shield. You see the stormtroopers, like, pushing the rebels back further, and they're almost at the shuttle, mm-hmm. while Bodhi's getting ready to talk to Radis, but yeah. he he knows his job. Mm-hmm. He does it, and then a grenade is tossed in the ship, and bada bing, bada boom. He just has, like, the, the most, like, disappointed face ever. He's just like, oh... I like Bodhi so much. I, I, yeah, I like I like his scenes a lot. I just, I just like he's the man. And, and then what? We... They killed Baze's battle buddy. You don't kill someone's battle buddy. Baze is pissed. He had a moment with him. He was laying there and he's like, "Don't go." No, and he's and then I forgot what Baze says or True says. True says, "Uh, look to the force and you'll always find me." Which is a sweet little line to say. Yeah, and then he dies. And then he dies. And, and Baze then, is a pissed boy. Then, and then Baze gives him a nice peck. Kiss him. Does he kiss him? I don't no, know. he doesn't. They're not lovers. I know, but it's okay if they are. <laughs> they kiss him their homies. You always kiss your homies at night. <laughs> and so then Baze just mows down the Death Troopers. Because Baze has armor mm-hmm. and a badass gun. And then he's saying, I'm one with the force. But he's saying a lot more slowly. Yeah, I'm and less... one with the force. The force is with me. Like, in and between he shots, yeah. he's saying it. And then... and then he shoots one that's holding a grenade. And he blows up. Rest in peace, base. Four down. We're rapid firing go. through people. Like, they die scene after scene. Mm-hmm. And just, you're just in the theater like, holy shit, they're actually doing yeah, this. You're, because you're like, it's a Star Wars movie. They're not going to kill people because, like, too many people that they don't have to kill. But you're like, also, where the hell would these people be if they don't die? Yeah, it's like, you're like, well, it's Star Wars, so obviously, you know. Obviously, they'll make a comic to a prequel time after, after episode nine, you know? Yeah. Raise parents. But they just keep dropping like flies. And you're like, shit, are Jin and Cassian, are Jin and Cassian and... safe? And then, yeah, they're in the thing. They get the plants. They climb up. Credit comes in. With two deathy boys. Two, take some shots. Cassian gets hit. Cassian kills two of the death troopers, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, because they dummy thick. <laughs> they dummy thick, dude. <laughs> and, then, um, <laughs> and then he takes a shot and falls down. There's a long drop. We saw so- something else fall down. Like, oh, shit, that's a long drop. And he's fallen. But he lands on a thing, platform. Or platform. And as you know, in Star Wars, it is physically impossible to die via falling. Yes. So the last damage he took was fall damage. That doesn't count. So he still has one HP left. Even if he goes into space. Yeah. It, falling does nothing in Star Wars. We know this. Yes. So we know, obviously, you know, you're like, okay, so he survived at least. Yeah. And Jin has to keep climbing. She gets out of there. Gets to Krennic, to the- just, Krennic just takes an elevator. Yeah. He takes the elevator up to the, where he knows she's going to be. She's up there, the light, and then trying to send send the signal. And he's and the thing's like re, what's the word? Reroute? Re not reroute. Realign. Realign the the um the dish. The dish. The satellite dish. And then she has to go do that. Then a tie fighter comes up. Or like right? Nope, that wasn't in this cut of the film. Oh, that was. In I the thought trailer. a ship did come up though. I was looking. But for she almost it. fell off, right? Because yeah, because it got hit, but it it wasn't like a ship flew up at her. Oh, it was she, just it got hit. So something got hit. She almost fell off, and then she gets up there. And who's there? Director Krennic. Krennic boy. But also before this, Bodhi told them they got to get the shield down. So what does Radis do to take down the shield? They disable a star destroyer with ion torpedoes. All the systems shut down. 
because they used a lot of fucking torpedoes there. All 3,000 of them. And so then they take a hammerhead Corvette and ram one Star Destroyer into the other. Just imagine, like, a normal Corvette in, like, real life with the with the front of, like, a a snowplow in front of it. And that's just hitting it. Thank, thank you. Hammerhead Corvette. Really. <laughs> Only vertical. And it's like, imagine it crashing into another car and just destroying, like, a bunch of cars. That's- and ripping the top off of the car. Yeah. That's a great shot. Okay. I love how also you, you see, like, the Star Destroyer coming in, and the one guy in the other Star Destroyer that's perfectly fine is like, reverse engines! <laughs> like, you're a little too fucking light there, you know? Right. And so then they they just crash two star destroyers into the shield gate. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure it's gone now. The, I lo- yeah, I love how it looks when they do crash into each other, and then it falls into the shield. It's just voila. the Am- shield. Amoratus, smart guy. May, it might be the chosen one. You know they. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's the boy who lived. That is a smart move. I'm pretty sure he died there. Radis? Yeah. Wait, did he die? His capital ship was disabled. Is and then he... Vader boarded it. Oh, is that why the capital ship nine is called the Radis or eight? Yeah, I would assume. In memory of the man. In memory of Admiral Radis, the boy who lived, who gave his life. Well, yeah. The, I, now I'm really happy they killed Akbar then, because like if Radis, if Radis isn't going to survive, Akbar doesn't deserve it. You can. I can almost hear the trigger. So <laughs> Admiral Radis way better than Admiral Akbar. Take it to the bank. So then Boyos. we have Krenny Boy. Up there with Jin. This is one of the things I don't like in this movie. Not this scene. But Jin's just like, we got the plans. We know there's a single flaw in the Death Star. Yeah, telling what, Krennic. Like, you don't know what's going to happen here. He has a gun. You might have a gun, but I don't remember if you do or not. She does. But like, he could destroy you, and then he knows how to do it. And then, then if he doesn't... What if he gets off? If he gets off Scarif and talks to anybody, like they could probably go in and figure it out and fix it. Yeah. <laughs> A little stupid. A little stupid. <laughs> little little stupido there. Like, that's... like the, I don't get why she did that. Like I said, yeah. she's overconfident, like, a lot like that, where she's like, um, da, 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 and then she's like, tells the plan, or like, does something. Like, when she's fighting people, I'm like, what are you doing? You trying to, like... If this could go horribly wrong. It could work. But, like, a little cocky confident there. I feel like she I like the confidence, but also, like, you're dummy. I feel like she just wanted to rub it in Krennic's face. I don't blame her for wanting to do that. But you but know how pissed he'll get. Do, do that maybe after he gets shot. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, because Cassian shows up right after and shoots Krennic. Yes. Maybe then you tell him, we found a flaw, you little bitch, and then, like, kick him in the ribs or something. I, Take his lunch money. When she ran back at him when after Cassian shot him. Oh, yeah, Cassian showed up and shot him. Yeah. And then, I really wanted, when she ran back at him, like, she was mad, I was really hoping she was going to kick him off the ledge. <laughs> But we gotta get the really good shot of the Death Star literally just shooting Krennic. Yeah, literally blows through the top of the satellite area and just destroys him. <laughs> the ultimate office downsizing. Right. You know Tarkin was so happy with that. His, his, his uh, He died amidst his achievement. <laughs> Some would say. Damn it. Some would say he choked on his aspirations. <laughs> he did. Literally. Literally. But so yeah, they, they realigned the dish. The dish sent the plans to Radis, and then the planet gets shot by the Death Star. Then Cassian and Jin were like, how are they going to get off? How are Ray's parents going to survive this? How are they going to conceive the baby, have the baby, and get off the, get the baby off the planet within like 20 seconds? I was so positive when this scene was happening in theaters, I was like, a Ewing is about to pull up and rescue them. I was so... When they went and sat down at the beach and were like, we're about to die here, and they're like hugging it out, I thought for sure a Ewing was going to swing by and pick them up. Mm-hmm. I never actually thought that. I didn't. Th- I'm like, I didn't think they had the balls to kill them all. Yeah. I was like, oh, here, here it comes, here it comes, and then the wave just consumes them, and I'm just like, it's such a, Bleh! it's such a beautiful moment. I love that moment with them because, like, they, you know, it's over. They're pr- they know it's over. They shared this journey. They have this bond now. I want we. It could be love. It could not be love. But they just knew in that moment there was a good chance they probably weren't coming back. And they just spent it with each other in that moment, and were together, and nothing else mattered, and they just washed away. And Cassian's already really fucked up at this point. Yeah. It's a a beautiful moment. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. B-A-U-T-F-O. It's also funny that the Death Star showed up through hyperspace there. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
it just pops in. They're like, we're detecting something massive and coming out of hyperspace. And they just look over and it's just there. <laughs> I want to see it pop out of hyperspace. <laughs> I've, Boom! It, took, it took too much on the effects budget for that. I'm like, we already have to do Tarkin and Leia for five minutes at the end or for like two seconds at the end. I also love, so Tarkin contacted Vader because he was like, we need we need more competent people other than me on this. So we need to bring <laughs> Vader in. Other than me. I, I don't like the, the idea that Grand Marf Tarkin is competent is bullshit. He's pretty competent. He can only be so competent. I don't think a competent person can have so many ins- incompetent people under him. You know what I mean? Well, that goes for the whole empire, then. Exactly, though. But, like, if you're so competent, so but get people who are competent. You're not a good leader if you don't got competent people under you. That's what makes Thrawn competent. Yeah. Because <laughs> he has... Rook. Rook. I think he has some people in his book. Book book. Oh, yeah. The Thrawn book. Oh. The Thrawn trilogy. I think about Rook from him. What? No, I think Thrawn has more people than just Rook. So, the only people who are competent in the Empire are Palpatine and Vader, but also they're not super competent because they didn't get... The, they didn't, the people could not carry the line of competence well enough, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, it comes down to just that their troops are moronic. Their officers are moronic. The competent ones are... There are there are four. Those three. Vader, Palpy, Thrawn, and Tarkin. Yeah, I guess. Those are the four competent people. I don't think Tarkin's competent. Well, we'll talk about it in A New Hope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, so he's like, we need to bring someone who can handle, who can get shit done. So he calls Vader. And Vader comes out of hyperspace already shooting. <laughs> they disable Radis's flagship, like, instantly. R.I.P. Mr. Radis. I do also like the scene when the rebels are jumping into hyperspace and a couple of them get away. And then Vader just shows up and a couple of them just bump into him. Yeah. I love all the Vader stuff. And then they're just like, it's disabled, so they get a boarding party. And this is where, we don't see it happen on screen, but obviously Radis died here. I'd like to believe he didn't. There's no way they boarded that ship and didn't kill everyone on board. It's That's Vader. True. But I'd like to believe, in my heart of hearts. If it was any other Imperial, yeah, Radis definitely survived. But since it's Vader, he absolutely killed every person on that ship. Yeah, I believe it, but I don't want to believe it. You know what I mean? That's fair. But yeah, and then we get the epic Vader hallway one of the best scene sequences in cinema. I want to put this scene into perspective for a lot of people. Vader is a myth. Most people don't know he exists. Most people think he's just like propaganda. Yeah, because after the Clone Wars, like people don't know the Force is a thing. Because Palpatine suppresses it so hard and like basically, basically wipes it from all of the records of everything. And so, say you're a, you're a soldier. Your ship just got disabled, you hear a boarding party incoming, and then you just hear this mechanical breathing. And then a red light appears. I would shit my pants. This is These are people who don't know that he exists. Right? They're like, what? And this is the first time we see Vader, like, seriously wreck people's lives. Because every time we see Vader fight in the original trilogy is against Luke, mm-hmm. who he is always holding back against, because he loves his son. Spoilers. <laughs> Vader's whole plot is join me Luke he doesn't want to hurt him so Vader's always holding back against Luke this is the first time we see him wrecking shit and I love it so much because it's just everybody's so terrified right. and he's just mowing them down and he uses everything he uses the force pull the push he throws them up and cuts him. Bullets. It's just. He, I love how he. Does he throw his lightsaber? I don't remember. No, not at this point. No. But I love how he threw the guy into the ceiling, and then as he's walking past, he just cuts the guy on the ceiling, <laughs> and he pulls all their blasters away and just cleaves through all of them, yeah. accompanied by a fantastic score too. And it's just the. I love the one trooper who's just like, I, I'm dying here. Take the plans. Take the plans. No, he's like, this is more important. Just, just get him. Get out get, of here. Get him. Out. Open the door. Get the fuck out of here. And the one guy who trips into the tent of four and is like, Watch! Watch! Such a great scene. This is the only scene that I've ever seen in a movie that in the theaters my jaw dropped watching it. <laughs> As a kid who grew up on Star Wars, there's nothing I wanted more than to see Vader just wreck in the house. Right. Ugh. That's the movie. That is the we movie. We get one final shot at the end of them getting the plans to someone... Someone in a white cloak looks familiar. Who could this be? And then turns around. She's like, what is this? It's Princess Leia. And they're like, hope. Credits. I feel like that scene could have worked if they just showed her from behind. I don't think it didn't work. I don't well, it's not, that it, it's not that it didn't work. It's that I feel like she didn't look as good. Yes. You know, using CGI to fully recreate someone's never a good idea. 
True. It's not that it didn't work. I just feel like it could have worked just as well if they just showed her from behind. No, yeah, but also like, don't if they're just gonna show her from behind. Don't show her at all. You know what I mean? Well, but they, they want you to know it's the tent of four, so you know this is right before four. Mm, yeah, but yeah, that is the movie. I hope you guys had fun. We'll talk about more more about the McDonald's menu next week, probably for sure. More about <laughs> cinema and Martin Scorsese. What else did we dress today? All the fun stuff. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, now it's time though for rank the movies. Rank, rank, rank the movies. Rank, rank, rank the movies. Number. <laughs> Our current rankings. Number five, The Phantom Out. Number four, The Phantom Menace. I was just pre- getting ahead of us. Number five, The Phantom Menace. Number four, The Phantom Menace. Number three, Attack of the Clones. Number two, Solo, A Star Wars Story. Number f- one, Revenge of the Sith. Dan. Where do we rank Rogue One? I think we both know where it's going. Yeah, it's in the title one. Our current new rankings. <laughs> Rogue One, number one. Number two, Revenge of the Sith. Number three, Solo. A Star Wars Story. Number four, Attack of the Clones. Number five, let's be safe. Number ten, The Phantom Menace. <laughs> <clears throat> number eleven, The Phantom Menace after Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> It is physically impossible. Okay, there's only... Now it's time for our first arc <coughs> where we rank the fight. There's only really one... Like, the bat- we don't do battles, so we really can't yeah. do the battle Scarif. Could we put Chirrut versus Stormtroopers in, or would you even want to rank that? Uh, I'd say that's up to you. If you really want to rank it, we can. I'm okay not Here's, ranking w- it. Would you put it above... Here, we'll just... For, fun- for funsies. For funsies. For funsies. Would you put Troop versus Stormtroopers above Grievous versus Obi Wan? Yeah. yeah. Would you put it above the trio for Stuku? No. Would you put it above Annie and Obi for Stuku? If I wouldn't, <laughs> I'm just asking. Sure. Would you? I don't think so. Would you put it above Dryden versus Kira? No. No, because it's not like it's not like a lengthy battle, and it's not like against anyone important. It's just Chirrut is a badass, and we get to see him wreck house. Yeah. So I'm okay ranking it, but I'm also okay not ranking it because he's not really fighting like a specific person. But I guess at the same time, then it's the same way with Vader, but we're ranking that in this film because it's just Vader v Rebels. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, if we're ranking the Vader one, we kind of got to rank the Chirrut one, because they're kind of in the same... And I like Chirrut. We, we, okay. we got to give them some representation. Yeah. So Plus, that, that scene is excellently choreographed. So, Vader fight, number one. Yes. Vader v. Hallway. Vader v. Hallway. <laughs> Vader vs. Rebels. It's got to be number one. After, like, 30 years of, of being told constantly how badass Vader is... And seeing him, like, be intimidating, but never really seeing him go all out. Mm-hmm. Finally getting to see it after, like, you know, my entire life. Yeah. Number one. For sure. I think we should put True versus the Stormtroopers right below Dryden versus Kira. Because remember, the, the, the trio versus Dooku was just a lot of, like, weird shots of the face thing. True. And I like to give representation of the non-lightsaber fights, too. <laughs> Yeah, we can put it there. Right under Dryden vs. Kira. Han vs. Dryden vs. Kira. Yeah, whatever. That's what I have it as on the graphic. Oh, well, we, they know what we mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two for three. Two. That's, that's, six, that's, six, 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 that's 666 percent, you know. I'm, I'm batting what? pretty good. <laughs> Baseball terms. Come on now. 666 percent? Yeah, never mind. Fuck, f- fuck me. I'm done. Okay, I'm done. I'm quitting the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, our rankings right now number wait how many we got now then? well we added in two from this one what was the last one nine ten ten no one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so twelve now yeah twelve now number twelve grievous versus obi-wan number eleven the trio versus dooku number ten anakin and obi-wan versus dooku number nine 
Yeah. <laughs> True versus Stormtroopers. Number eight, Dryden versus Kira. Number seven, Windu versus Palp. Number six, Palp versus Yoda. Number five, the Coliseum scene. Number four, Django v. Obi-Wan. Number three, Duel of the Fates. Number two, Obi-Wan versus Annie and Lucifer. Number one, Vader versus the world. <laughs> Vader versus Hallway. Yes. I like that. <laughs> I like where those stand. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Do you think anything will ever be lower than the Grievous versus Obi-Wan? I think the only one that I'll make an argument for is in the next movie. What, Old Ben versus Vader? I won't allow that. I'm going to make an argument for it. I won't allow this to be less. I mainly because it... It may not be the best choreographed fight, but I think the stakes and like what the meaning of the emotion there is more important than the actual fight itself. I we'll think, get there. Yeah, we'll get there when we get there. We'll have this discussion next time. Yeah. Otherwise, no. <laughs> well, especially because in the next... Three, we pretty much only have one fight each. Yeah. I mean, there's no other really, like... We're not going to do Han versus some... Greedo. ...versus um, Luke over his sister's love. No. We're not going to do Boba Fett versus the world. <laughs> oh, you... you That would be below Obi-Wan versus Grievous. Does Boba Fett have a fight? When he charges Luke. Well, when we get, mul when we get multiple fights in six... I mean, there's really only... I mean, I, The uh, Rancor, the Skiff fight, the... Would the Skiff fight count? Probably. We'll get there. there's a fight. We'll get there. But um, then we got the Hamburglar versus Ronald McDonald. That's true. And but I'm just saying, there's no the fight. End, Ewoks versus the world. The worst fight ever is Boba trying to beat Luke and then immediately going out like a chump. Well, probably be last then. Yeah. So, those are our rankings. Um, <laughs> now time for the medals, 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 medals. ba da ba da -ba. Of bravery. Should have a new graphic on screen for it. How did this happen, Dan? We're smarter than this. And the award goes to... We have agreed on this. Borgullet. Borgullet. I think the only two ones that were in contention were Borgullet and the Vader scene, but you like the Vader scene, and Borgullet just sucks all around, so... Borgullet is just the most unnecessary scene. Not the Vader fight scene. Yeah, the, the Vader talking to Krennic scene is what he was yeah. talking about there. Um... Like, the, I get the point of the Borgullet scene is to show just how, like, extremist Saw is, but we've been, getting, he is. we've been getting beat over the head with it this whole movie. Yeah. I don't think we need a whole scene dedicated to it. And mm -hmm. it was just, I feel like it was largely just an excuse to get another big monster in there. <laughs> yeah. So Which is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Superfluous. So that's so wizard moment. Has to go to the hallway. Has to scene. go to the hallway. It's the by best scene of this movie. By yes. far. E easily. Normally we don't try to pick the fights for this, but like it has this to be. This one it has way. to be. My second place for this would probably be the scene between Jin and Cassian on the plane. Yeah. Or some Scarif on the, stuff. On, on the Zeta shuttle, yeah. Or, or some something on Scarif. Yeah. But it has to go to Vader. It ha yeah, it really has to. <laughs> this is the quickest we've ever gone through the medals, because we both agree. Yeah, and then... The chosen one will actually probably have a little bit of a discussion about I'm thinking this is the first time we give the chosen one to a squad. Give it to two people. You wanna know why? Hmm. Because this movie's about a squad. And this movie's about a group of people, a group of friends, people who care about each other, fighting for what they believe. And that they all have their own moments to shine. So I think it'd be disrespectful to not maybe include two people who fully deserve it. Those two being? The brothers, K2 and Cassian. Or does this go against everything we believe in for our chosen <laughs> one? I'm very torn. Yeah? Because I do I do agree with you. It'd be kind of a disservice to both of them to not have them. But at the same time, it is the chosen one. It is the boy who lived. But I think... I really want to give it to both of them. K2 is the best droid. Period. Yeah. Bar none. Let's give it to K2 then. So we don't have to... I don't think anyone's going to care if we give it to both of them. But also... But for our, for us. For us. <laughs> in, in our hearts, it's both of them. But the winner will be K2SO just because I want 
some droid representation on the list. And he's the best droid. Yes, he is the best droid. He's hilarious. Can we just give it to Sabine? What? What? <laughs> or Sandula, they said her name. Hera? Yeah, they just said her name. That's enough for me. You know I love the Phoenix Sabine. Squad. Sabine. Yeah. Yeah, you love him so much, Sabine Sandula. Kanan? I want more Rebels, Dan. Yeah? yeah. I, I know you do. So the Chosen One. K2-so. K2-so. Because he's constantly having brilliant, witty, longs of dialogue. He's funny. He's does his job well. And he's just he's just so fun. I, he steals this every scene he's in. And he has such a great relationship with Cassian and even as well with Jin. Like, they have their little, like... I love the scene when she's like, well, maybe they'll miss you and hit me. And then she hands him his bag and he just drops it. It's like, ah, mm-hmm. that doesn't sound too bad to me. I want to give some honorable mentions for this one, though. Yes. Because this is, um... There's a lot of good. A lot of, like, a lot of goodness. So, honorable mention to Cass and Andor. Honorable mention to Bayes Malibus. Honorable mention to Chiru. Imwe. Imwe. Honorable mention to Jyn Erso. Honorable mention to Saw Gerrera. Honorable mention to Director Krennic. Yes. Honorable mention to Death Troopers. Honorable mention to Tank <laughs> Troopers. Honorable mention to Pow. I... I just love everybody in this movie. Yes. I, I just... I, I will mention Bodhi Rook. Your acting was phenomenal. Yes. Riz Ahmed. Go win an Oscar. He definitely, he definitely was very well acted. I love the intensity of Krennic so much. Every line he has is a meme. Because he's just so over the top. I love that actor. I love that about... Uh, that's the thing that I really like about the First Order, actually, is that they're just like a hyperbolic empire where they're just so over the top. Mm-hmm. Krennic kind of captures that very well as well. He's just so over the top. He's so... He's like the middle manager of the empire. He's just so <laughs> pissed that he can't climb any higher. Right. He's, he's like the manager of Burkha. That... <laughs> 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 Burns and Noble. Burn. <laughs> uh, luckily, no one will listen to this. <laughs> well, luckily, there's also ten Burkots within a five-mile radius. Really? There's a lot of Burkotts in this area. Okay, stop talking about it. Let's not locate this. You know, <laughs> we live in the sunny state of California. Yeah, we live in Los Angeles. <laughs> so, um, no, or at least we're moving to Los Angeles in a few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought we were going to Canada. Uh, we can go wherever you want. Okay. North yeah. Dakota. North Dakota? Okay, we're moving in two weeks. We're moving Dakota. to Edu. So we might not have a podcast until Rise of comes out. <laughs> just kidding. But, um, yeah, like, I love how just o- how angry he is all the time, how over the top he is. I know he doesn't deserve the chosen one, but I just No, love he doesn't him. deserve... I don't even care. I don't even like him that much. Oh, I just love I him. love the actor more than the character, because that actor was in a show I watched before he was in this called um, Bloodlines on Netflix, and he was... He's just so good at playing the bad guy. And then in the MCU, he's kind of a bad guy, but kind of a good guy. It's mixed. But I, love, I want to see him just be a good guy. That'd be funny. Yeah, that would be pretty funny. But like yeah. I said, he he's not a great character. I just personally love him. Because yeah, he's course. so he, mean. Because he's a bad guy. Well, he's he's also, the dark side. He's, he's also, Empire guy. Of course you I, love him. I am Empire. But he's also just so funny. Every line he says is so over the top. It's funny. Pow's funny, but you don't have this deep love for him. He, he has a... Pow doesn't scream his lines. He opens his mouth once, and you're like, and that's hilarious, but you don't love Pow like I do just because he opened his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, he's... This is the, by far the best or the worst podcast we've ever made. I think it's both. I think it is both. It's truly the greatest, worst episode of anything we've ever produced. Comments down below agree. Like, honestly, tell us how you, if you enjoyed this, because... Tell us if you fucking despise And tell us it. why. Tell us, tell us why. I came here to hear about Rogue One, and you went off about the McDonald's menu 45 times. I'm just mad that they got rid of the... I don't know what they got rid of. <laughs> the McRib's gone! Order a McGangbang. Is that the McDouble within the McChicken? Yeah. Yeah. Go and fuck a McChicken. Remember that meme from, like, 2012? No. I remember Coney from 2012. That's all I remember from 2012. It was an old meme where some guy fucked a McChicken and recorded oh, it. Oh, yeah. I remember. So, Rogue One. Fun film. I don't want to end on that. Rogue One. Yeah. Go watch it. It might be number one when it's all said and done. Probably not, but you never know. We have a lot of... All all the movies we have left are very good movies, so... Yeah. Yeah. This has been the Holocron cast, the Road to Skywalker, Rogue One edition. We are the powerful five guys. I haven't said that in a long time. I've been forgetting to say that. That's the name of our channel and shit. Like, favorite, subscribe, comment, comment. Follow our Twitter, comment. 
Tell us what you love. Tell us what you hate. We have an Instagram. If you want to, I almost said something that I probably shouldn't have said. Don't say it. I'm not going to say it. If you want to stop making podcasts forever, just tell us. <laughs> just let us know someone's out there. Let us know someone's out there. Let us know someone cares. We need to feel like we're cared for. <laughs> all we all we have is each other. We're touching <laughs> hands right now. <laughs> that has been the Holocaust. Goodbye. <laughs>